Hi, welcome to episode 15 of the World to Rates podcast. Coming to you late, as is our way. This is just a quick little trigger warning. Um, this is another mental health episode. So we do touch on topics including depression, anxiety, other mental disorders, as well as some self-harm discussions. So please be aware of that going into it. Um, also be aware that for some reason, Piers decided to keep naming names and Kat was not impressed with it. And so there is the occasional beep to censor out names. Um, I am merely an editor. I um, do my job and I do it well. Thank you so much for listening. Sticking with us all the way to episode 50. Um, you're great. And I'm going to stop talking and let you listen to the podcast. Carry on. How you been, Chrissy, anyway? <laughs> well... Did, did... Oh, wow, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's kind of the whole point of this podcast, really. Yeah, so let, let's get right to the meat and potatoes. And this is Chris's intervention. <laughs> so I don't know what this is, really. I don't know. I feel like I've been... Oh, I'm recording as well, by the way. Okay, okay. beautiful. I don't... I don't... Um... We don't have to do. You have to do anything with that information. I just thought I'd let you know. Can, I give you consent to record me chatting shit. If we you could... were going to give me consent for recording you chatting shit, then we probably should have done that about fifty episodes <laughs> ago. Oh yeah, it's our fiftieth episode. Did Since I, I was that? about twelve, I'm sorry. Did I tell you that it was our fiftieth episode, which is why? I yeah, it, well, you didn't say fiftieth, but you said it was like a big deal today. That's what you said. Can, can I make a confession, Chris? Yeah, go. When you said, "Oh, Pierce, <laughs> is Pierce joining us this weekend?" I was like, "Fuck, I forgot to ask him." <laughs> <laughs> and I called him like four times, like to try and get him to pick up, and he wouldn't pick up. So I went in the studio. I was like, "I fucked up. I fucked up." She did. I am entirely um, unsurprised. Yeah, I don't even, I've not even been busy, like, I don't know. <laughs> I know, you well, said yes, but I was busy. like, there's no way you're that organised. <laughs> yeah, so, no, he, he agreed to it yesterday, good, and then, good. obviously, like, as you know, this morning didn't go to plan. What do you mean? Everything's yeah. gone perfectly to plan. <laughs> We're recording this at our normal time. Um, yes, definitely not three hours late. No? <laughs> no? Didn't happen. Um, so I'm like, I go to set up. I'm like, oh, Pierce, just like come over so I can make sure you're in shot of the camera. And then he like looks at me funny, and I'm thinking, oh, what now? What now? And then like we realised that uh, he was like, are we, are we gonna use headphones? I was like, yeah. I thought, oh fuck, I haven't thought about the fact we need two sets of headphones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then do you know how hard it is to find friggin' headphones these days that fit into what? Like I used Bluetooth and then an aux. Yeah. And it just kept like you couldn't do two at once. It was prioritizing one or the other. Yeah, I think everything also had a downside. So it's like, oh, we can go into here, and you know, we can plug in two loads of headphones. Oh, we can go over there, and so on and so forth. And then it was just like, actually, none of those ideas work. We're shit. Oh, okay. We've got ten I, minutes before it's all going to start. Yeah, I was just like, just... oh, what we'll do is we'll put on. Sorry, I just interrupted. Um, we'll put on Discord on one of the phones and then put in just normal earphones. Through, so we're sharing earphones. Which Aww. Is a bit... yeah. Oh. Yeah. So we're gonna have to get on for this episode. Yeah, that we don't ever share anything. It's like, do you want half a pizza? Fuck off! I want the pizza. Well, we share drinks. You know. Yeah. <laughs> We share drinks, which I think people would probably find weird. What? Like, Sharing we, drinks? We, yeah, like, we'll get, instead of going and getting I two, that's a pretty normal thing. two glasses of water or whatever, we'll just share yeah. one. No, I don't think that's the know, weirdest I, thing I've heard all no. day. That's pretty normal. Um, How well, was your morning? Well, it happened. Because I, I, this is what I was going to, like, I just gave you our, our whole spiel. Like, I wanted you to fill in the blanks. You wanted me to fill in the blanks? Like, like, on your side sentence. of what happened? <laughs> uh, well, not a lot. I mean, I woke up. Um, obviously, on time. the fact that the clocks have changed has not done me any favours in the long term, because now I'm going to be in a weird 
half zombie state for something. You know when the clock's changing, it just it really messes me up. I don't know why. One Did hour the clock's changed. <laughs> breaks my brain. <laughs> I saw someone post about this, and I thought, like, oh. I wondered what the silence was, and I thought, there's two options here. <laughs> Either this is an issue that only happens to me, or they've not realised the clock's <laughs> No, I didn't and know. now we know. Now we We've know. had an hour hour longer, haven't we? That was yes. it. Because they were saying about oh, NH- sod, really? NHS workers having to work an extra hour without yes. getting paid. Yeah, that's even. That means I'm even lazier than I thought I was this morning. Well, no, don't, 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 don't. don't no, we, let's not fall into that trap. No, <laughs> let's let's be kind <laughs> to ourselves. Uh, let's not get on that one. Bro. <laughs> well, yes. So the clock's changed. Um. Some of us were aware of it, and it's going to mess us up. Some of us have adjusted to it like they didn't even know it was happening. That's good, isn't it? Um, but no, I woke up on time, and then when you said, Piers is running late, I immediately stopped being on... I just like... <laughs> I had so much motivation. And he said, Piers, I was like, oh, all right, and I just laid back down in bed. Um, and then got my shit together, went out, did some shopping. There were lots of stupid people around, so obviously it took longer than usual. And now here I am. Were you? Did you go to Big Tesco or did you go to the cop? I went to Sainsbury's because I had to go and get something <gasps> else as well. Um, I I wouldn't. To be honest, I'd give it a four out of ten today. Um, oh. Disappointing, really, on the whole. Disappointing. Oh. Sainsbury's is so fancy, and it's yeah, like, and you that's go to a it commitment to get, as well. You like go to it because you want at least an average six or seven. Yeah, it was experience. disappointing. It was disappointing. Yeah. It it's not. I mean, it's no M and S eight or nine, but it's, it's no, 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 no. It was it was never going to be on that level, but it was no, yeah. I uh, disappointed. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How would you? That's like, so real. Like, what what would be your order of supermarkets? We were sort of like having the, this conversation with the band slightly. Before we um, do this, should we actually say hello to people listening? Because oh, yeah. I've been recording for eight minutes and we haven't actually said hello to them. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe hi no one's guys. listening. If you're listening, Welcome hi. Back. If you're not listening, well, you won't know. I've even bothered doing that anyway. So. This week. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why did you choke? I just pulled out. <laughs> no, I went. Ah. Oh. Oh. I accidentally caught the wire and, went and yanked it. Um, it wasn't that hard, but it was just like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I thought you were like, ah, and choking. Um, That's right, it's going to oh, be yeah. another one of these episodes, everyone. <laughs> I was going to say, this week is like the first week that I've realised that, like, it's not just like one or two people listening, there's actually like a group of people I should that never listen. have told you this. Up until now, you've had no idea. <laughs> Now you're aware of it. I genuinely, like, I'm going to start, like, panicking now that I know people are listening like, These people, like, every time I mention you, these people love you. It's like, <laughs> you can do no wrong in their eyes. There's, like, these people, uh, they're big fans of yours. Um, oh my it, god. Can only go downhill. I think they prefer <laughs> you to me, to be quite honest. Aww. I th- Aww. Well, don't, don't say <laughs> aww like that, I mean, you know. Well, I prefer you, Chris. All right. Well, thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Not just on the podcast either. Just like no, 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 no. exclusively. Yeah. 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 Well, your nan my, does prefer my, I mean, me. Yes. My nan by a lot. <laughs> yeah. By a lot. By she a would have you in a heartbeat. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking um, about supermarket yeah. things. Um. So yes. I would say that that's not the point of this episode, but we are doing it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. What would I say is my top? Uh, I mean, a top right now. Let's, you know, I'm gonna put Tesco in at top. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in top of Tesco okay. there. Um, okay. Really? Now the reason yeah, for this is I don't go to lots of the other ones enough, so they kind of fall mm. down the rankings. So Tesco's up there. Uh, then we'll follow it up with. What would I go for next? What would I do? You know what? I'm gonna shock everyone here. Aldi no, number two. Okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going in. I'm going with Aldi number two. Then we'll probably just put in the 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 waitroses and the M and S is kind mm. of a they're kind of a mid tier. I don't they're not really my I don't go there. So I can't Ooh. really I think 
for us that M&S oh, has mate. become like it's our little treat. You know, we wouldn't Ooh. shop. We wouldn't do our whole food shop. I know, it's so fancy. Ooh, it's someone's like, making in... money at the moment, aren't they? Well, no, no, no we no, just decided. Like cost of yeah. living crisis, and you're going into an essay, eh? bastards. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just decided that you know, instead of eight takeaways a week, we... it was actually cheaper just to go on one M and S shop. That yeah. is, that we're is not true. like when you say a shop, we get like forty quids worth of stuff, and that's not a huge amount. Of no, 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 that's like a forty that's a quid is not no. It's very no, I can, I can respect. I can respect. But that's that's like a little treat. I agree with you with Tesco. Um, yeah. I want to say Tesco's. Like, what is that? Yeah, about? I've never known which one to go for. To be honest, um, Tesco. It's Tesco, but I want to say Tesco's. I don't. Yeah. It's just in me. Um, yeah. So I would. I agree with you. Tesco's up there because it's like got such a wide range of. Tesco you never can, really fails me. Why did you flinch? Sorry, I thought you were going to slap me because I'm still trying to say Tesco. No, Tesco, no. sorry, no. <laughs> it just fully flinched as I just did a hand gesture. I, th- like, I thought she was watching me and then she was going to hit me. Has Kat been hissing you again, Pierce? We need to talk about that. When you say again, it, it, you make it sound like it's ever stopped, Chris. I mean, you know, well, really, that's true. it's, that's it's just there. this ongoing assault. Good point. Um, Good point. Yeah. Sometimes she says, Piers, it's your, your sm- sp- I nearly said spanking time. <laughs> <laughs> it's spanking time. No, oh, God. It's spanking time, bitch. So, baby. <laughs> I'm so glad you're on this episode. <laughs> Why? What? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, God, that's good. Oh, but too far. Get quickly. So yeah. So I'd probably say like M and S, then Tesco. But the ones that I actually shop at on a bi-weekly basis is uh, are Aldi and Lidl. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Rotation. I don't. I used to be a hardcore Aldi lover, but um, Pierce's parents love Lidl, and we go food shopping together. So we normally just go to Lidl. The only big difference I've ever really equated between the, both of them is when I go into Aldi and the when random I... random crap aisles. No, no, I think it's when I'm halfway around Lidl and I start singing, Little by little, <laughs> we gave you all the dream you ever dreamed of. And it's, it's when I establish, I'm in Lidl, I'm going to start singing, Little by little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference between them for me. I was, I was Aldi by Aldi on. just doesn't work. I was holding on for something like... I don't know. I was expecting something else. <laughs> I thought you were going to say about the bakery in Lidl because yeah, that's, that's that nice, would have yeah. been something. Yeah, yeah that's that true. Yeah, and you love the bakery there. Like, oh, yeah, that's when I start singing "Little by Little" as I pick up, pick up the baguettes. Mm. The bakery is fucking beautiful. So this podcast was going to be about mental health. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. No, we're eighteen minutes in. Yeah, no, episode fifty, and we're talking about mental health. But what we've actually done is talk about supermarkets and. Germany <laughs> and I think something else. Did we talk something else? I can't remember. Yeah, probably. Spanking. Oh, that, yeah. True, true. There was some spanking chat. Can, Sorry, there was, there was some can, spanking chat. Can that chat. clip please be used as a promotion for this episode? Like, just just you talking, like you and Pierce saying <laughs> what we've been talking, talking about. about spanking my chat. face we just being that. blank. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. I'm she looks so... Honest. She looks so unimpressed as well. Like, it's 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 so you become desensitized to it, I find after a while. Because she always looks so unimpressed with me. Well, the sen- spanking as well. Um uh, yeah. the spanking I have no after feeling a while, cheek. you have to you have to you know, you have to change it up a bit, go for a different cheek, maybe use a spiked <laughs> glove or something just to really shake it up. But the unimpressed look that I imagine I'm getting now, that you know, you, sometimes it, it it just you become desensitized to it. I looked at her face when you said that, and yeah. she was staring off into the distance, and you could see she was thinking about it. Mm. Mm. There was, the cogs were I going around. Nothing. I regret nothing. Anyway, you know, Chris, you when she comes decent? at me tonight with the, the when she comes the at you with a spike bat, glove tonight, I'm gonna I blame you. Yeah. Well, you say blame me, but it might be fun. Anyway, um. Can't mental you wanna, health. You want to explain? Our mental health is all shit. This <laughs> <laughs> is doing all right. I'm yeah. fine. Two, two thirds. I'm okay right now. Are fucked. One third. 
Okay. Look, we spent okay. weeks thinking out what to do for episode 50. And was like, we could do something fun, Nikita. And then I was like, but I'm really fucking sad. So why don't we just talk about me being sad again? Um, yes. And then we could talk about you being sad. And then we could talk about Piers not being sad. And it could counterbalance it. That sounds that sounds great. But hold on, that's two thirds of sadness. I have to make up with one third of sadness. You, that's, you that's can, I think you, you can, can do, do that. <laughs> I have do faith. There is... I absolutely have faith in you. Oh my god! My like so my much pressure. My levels reader can definitely testify that you can make up the both of us. <laughs> I can make up the both of you. Hi, welcome. It's twenty one minutes you... in, and we haven't really started. Cat, tell me okay. about. How you have been. Oh, God. I don't know, like, it's, it's difficult. I'm in this weird you place. You have to stop of... laughing, you have to be serious about this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm being serious, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. That's uh, I'm fine. You suck. Sorry. Um, I don't know I've how been to really be... sad. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Go. I'm I'm smiling too much. Well, that's okay. You can <laughs> smile through the sadness. It'll be it'll be comforting to people, maybe. Um. That or they'll just think you're batshit crazy. Fuck's sake! What was I going to say? Oh yeah. So I'm in this weird place. Can you fucking stop? Sorry, I'm I, I, will, I, will, I will. That's the last one. Toe. That's the last one. Chris, that's something in there for you when you're looking through the footage later. You go, ah, that's what you was doing to me. I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. Who was it? He used to say, "Can you just not?" I feel like you. I've adopted this now. You, yeah, it's yeah. Me now. you said that for literal years. Okay. Yeah, or get in a bin. Yeah, get in a bin. Can you not? I love slag. Yeah. Okay. You called me by message today <laughs> for the first time in what felt like years that I've got slag from you. I was like, "Oh, all right." Back in the day. I, no, I was jealous because you were getting a hot tea. I have been nursing a cold tea for about three hours, Why have you and I've put it in that? the micro. I've put it in the microwave a couple of times. Oh but I just no, you got stuck getting... in the cycle. Yeah. When you start microwaving, I... that's a bad time because you're never going to finish it, really. No, and there's a little bit left. But when I started drinking it, Pierce like pulled this face at me, and I just realised no, no. that it's. You know, I met a guy once who used to microwave bacon. <laughs> Your dad. <laughs> raw, raw bacon. Your dad. He used to, no, not my dad. He used to come in and it's like, you're right, mate. Yeah, how are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm going to put some bacon on. You want the frying pan? No, don't worry. Into the no, into the microwave. Into and you'd look dad. at him and he put it in the roll and you you just think you... you, you. Please tell There's me you weren't with this girl. This... No, no, guy. No, this was oh, actually guy. a girl I was with, his uncle. Um, oh, my God. Guy, yes. Yeah, I know. And and so, you know, you, you don't know him that well. You can't say anything. No, yeah. No, I was well. trying to... Yeah. No, no. I wasn't, I wasn't going to name... That's why I put my hand out. I wasn't going to I didn't say it. anything bad about her. I just said her uncle's okay. a, a freak. You know, yeah. well, bacon, he's a freak. microwave You can't freak. be microwaving yeah. bacon. That's fucking ridiculous. That's that's bastard move. That's Can weird. I swear? Yeah. No. Oh, it's too late now. To fucking go for it. That's what I say. We don't fucking uh, People swear. want to understand. I think that's that's, you know... It's all a load of shitting fun over here. That's, you fucking go. But my point was that when I was taking a swig, I don't know if it's because my mug's so big, but you pulled this face at me and it made me gag, so I can't finish my tea. All right. Right, my mental health. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, we're talking about your mental health. How's that? It, it's, I'm in a weird place because, like, I've obviously... I've shared pretty much everything on the podcast now. Like, I got um, the coil fitted at the beginning of the year, um... And then I've now got this cyst and there's like a few things going on. So I've got like the hormonal con- like contraception and then I've got um, sleeping pills. And I, you know, and you're like, I don't actually know where my body's at naturally anymore. So I don't know whether I'm feeling like crap because I'm taking painkiller sleeping pills and I've got hormones in me. Like, I just don't know where I'm at. But like that doesn't necessarily help even if I was like oh yeah it's my contraception or oh yeah it's this that doesn't help in the meantime because I'm on them for a reason like I can't just stop taking everything (laughs) um no that would be a bad idea yeah I like I've tried like different types of contraception and like you know sometimes things work for a while and then don't work I 
it yeah so it's it's difficult because i don't know if it's caused by that or if it's just me feeling like shit because mental illness you know um i think obviously struggling to get my dream job that's that weighs heavy you know i've been working my whole life and then and i've also been very lucky in the sense that i've not faced a lot of rejection in my life but that sounds really like no, what are they? <laughs> Sorry. They're not, not in like a, <laughs> you bitch. That, Sorry. But like, you know, I got into the university I wanted to go to. My um, mum rejected me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you live next to your that, mum. That really sets off life as a great starter. <laughs> Don't want that. <laughs> You're really exposing me here, not you. <laughs> Solid three minutes there where we had some serious chat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some serious chat in there. And then Kat looks at me for one word. And I was like, yeah, I've got something for you. <laughs> Spank you later. <laughs> With a metal glove. <laughs> the best thing is, Chris, when you're going to look at this footage, you're going to be like, oh my God, look at Piers. He's just pulling the most sensible face. And he's, he's like, mm, mm. <laughs> And then it just changes in one instance. One look, one look is all it takes. Right, can I just... Yes, you can, I'm so sorry. You should be. Um, what I mean by I haven't faced a lot of rejection, because that sounds like it could be taken in the wrong way. I mean, like, you know, whenever I've applied to jobs previously, I've always got them. Like, so um, my first few jobs, sort of working at a cafe, working at bars... Uh, co- like a cocktail place like all of these different places like loads of them um, yeah I think I had about 10 jobs and every one I applied to I got so like getting to this point where I've like had an interview and I haven't had anything like haven't had anything back from them it's a weird place to be in because I just haven't experienced that yet and everyone goes through it at some point but it's just it's weird because then you start doubting yourself and you're like I literally have qualifications to prove my intelligence like and it doesn't feel like enough I, th- I think the other thing is as well, um, Bob, I think you have to think about the fact that you've been alone for big chunks of it as well. You know, I mean, I come in in the night time, oh, but, you know, from like the time you the wake day. up until four or five o'clock at, in the afternoon, and you know, I've you never... just, there's nothing in the house. There's, yeah. there's nothing going on. And I think that, that I'm, as you say, I think there's so many factors. I think your um, medication, uh, you know, the sleep pills, um the uh, the quarrel and, and um sorry <laughs> am i not supposed to say no, 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 it's no. Just you look like I, I look down like the <laughs> quarrel <laughs> wait that was your fault i, I was going to you could just say contraception the contraception oh, i forgot man. the name all right <laughs> i couldn't find the word contraception so i went the coil be quiet chris i'm on a roll here <laughs> start singing it little by little is this like from an advert or have you just made this up from the song I've made it up from the song <laughs> it's not even it sounds like, like little by little I get that. by Oasis Crass- classic I 90s just... tune oh 2000s tune sorry I just thought that maybe it had been used in an advert and that's why you had it stuck in your head you're just actually psychotic <laughs> it's a song it's a, grand, it's a fantastic song why wouldn't you sing that yeah <laughs> Rolling in, around little, to little. be real though, little. If you want, um, if you want little by little to be used in your adverts, Piers will <laughs> perform that for you. Oh he yeah, is good, good right me. here, that right is... now. Why have you not proposed <laughs> that to them? You could have Signed made some up. money. Or they... do they do TV adverts? Little, I wouldn't know because they haven't got yeah. a catchy song to go. They with. do, but no, they will best... now. You'll remember them because I'll have the catchy song. Just cut me in when you get the deal, okay? <laughs> Do you want to know something funny that happened this week as well? I just, this has just remind me. Don't name names before, like, when I say this, don't come out with who said it. Um, sorry, just making sure Piers doesn't just out everyone. Piers, I can't goes believe your tells... mum said that. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> Piers goes to a, a a Tory. Who he knows is a Tory. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And then basically goes oh yeah cat hates tories oh why don't you chat to each other i'm so like... proud of you i, 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 I was up. like you know cat said it to me and the thing is you love a good debate i know but it was not the right occasion for that no you're joking loves that shut up
Your I love the debate. You're naming names. Well, of course, I'm going to name names. No. Why can't I name names? No. You're going to make Chris. You've have been to edit watching that out. spy program too much. You have. You're watching it with me. And I, was I know, like, and that's why I'm like, you've been watching it too you, much. You can't name I can't names. name names. No. Well, then, yeah, all right, Chris. Well, you can name names as long as you're happy that they'll end up in the edit. Oh, yeah, you couldn't care No. Less. <laughs> not he says all kinds of things to me. It's not fucking hell. I could <laughs> some of the things he said to me. My God, man. <laughs> Ooh, damn. Oh, that's, that's, that's not Do you realise these are the foundations your career is going to be based on? Like, yeah, so I'll, I'll go forward as I as I mean to, you know. You know start, start as, you as mean I mean to, to go, go on. on. That's the one, you know. Uh, right. So, Kat, how is your mental health? <laughs> if I go off now, this is, this is derailed. <laughs> made, this is not being brought back. <laughs> I'm making several notes in this, love, like timestamps of when I need to go in the edit and just like. Look really, really carefully to make sure <laughs> that I just remove certain bits. Yeah, well, Pierce comes out as a fucking. Sorry, Chris, do you Piers want to Pierce opens his mouth and there's a jump cut immediately to something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I do it. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, what is going on? You're not normally this peppy. I think it's because Chris is on the phone and I'm happy. It's me, yeah. It's uh-huh. true. I'm so bad. I'm not enough this. for you. Well, sorry, you both asked a question. At the, I said, the so I'm not enough for you. Um, not when Chris is, you know. Okay, sorry. that's fine. When I'm on the cards, it's a different story. Yeah. Well, it's just like, oh, that's a that's a lovely looking steak. I'm a vegetarian, so even then, it's not great. But you know, that's a lovely looking steak. But then, oh, what's better than a steak? I don't know. That's all I've been thinking about. Bacon. Something better than a steak is over to the right. No, you've had well, not bacon if it's been in the, the microwave. Steak. Am I the bacon or am I the steak? You're the steak in this one, but I think really I should have started with the bacon and then seen the steak to the right. <laughs> oh well. Wait, so what is Chris? Chris is the better dish. Right. Okay. <laughs> he has got a s- supreme ass. I do have a thick <laughs> ass, to be fair. Put my jeans on today, slapped my ass, and I was like, damn, you're looking good. <laughs> I'm only half joking. Anyway. I have been taking I've been taking notes on what I have to remove later on, but also I've been taking notes on what you were saying. Um, which basically Ooh, means that I'm now some therapist. kind of psychotherapist, exactly. Um anyway. So quite Chris. quite a lot here really, Kat, isn't it? Oh yeah. It's oh, quite... also news. You know we were doing the same I think we spoke about this on the podcast. We were doing the same therapy thing. Oh Christ. I was like, no, this is not fucking working. Actually, the woman, um, the like person who does your little reviews, um, she gathered that was not fucking helping. Um, and so she's recommended me for another thing that starts in December. So I'm going to be trying something different. So that's something. All right. Is that like an in-person thing? or? No, it's through teams but it's like a group teams thing okay. so i don't know it's um trauma therapy instead of anxiety therapy so yeah. that might do something i don't know it's just like try t- seeing if i guess it's like contraception you just keep trying until you find something that works for you and doesn't fuck you up pretty yeah. much um, i mean definitely it's uh like yeah i mean to talk about the therapy thing um so me and kat are actually on that we <laughs> We ended up on the same program, starting at about the same time without knowing about it. Um, really funny. Very fucking weird. But it's basically this online um, therapy kind of tool, I guess, that affects... I mean, if anyone who's like been through similar things will probably know about it. But um, basically they can put on their different modules and things, and so you learn about these various mental kind of disorders and things. and techniques you can use and ways of changing your thought patterns and things and i think it probably really works so well for some people um yeah we have a friend who it would have worked really well for because they're the kind of person who will just completely throw themselves into it and and go through all these kind of things um Mm. for me i would say it's completely useless yeah i i noticed on it what i said to like the supervisor lady i was like there's nothing on this that I haven't already thought about. Yeah. And it's not like I'm some genius, but it's like, 
oh, what has triggered this emotion? Um, what physical response has this given? Like, it's, it's kind of, for me, I'm like, well, okay, the thought of dri- being late or the thought of driving somewhere, that's what's made me anxious. And then my heart started racing or mm. you know, whatever it is. And like, I think with it, like a, a psychiatrist or someone who sat in the room with you, they can ask these questions. And the point is that they do a very similar thing to that. You know, they say, well, what did that mean to you? But they wait until they find something that mm. doesn't sound right and then they pursue down that mm. path. Instead of just asking a load of generalizations, they go for through that and then they find a path down into the next section, next section. So I think to have something just asking a load of general questions to you, I don't know, just seems so monotonous. And when you some of it, it isn't in. even asking questions. Some of it is like so this is what happens when you have a panic attack and it takes you through and say, <laughs> yes, I'm fully aware of what a panic attack yeah. is like. I have That's them. I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't need reminding of this thing that I'm going through. I need you to tell me how to stop. So I just, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to revise panic attacks. I want you to help me out stopping them or, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think for me, I always found... Oh, I say handy. I, I, um, was it the Samaritans? The crisis team, wasn't mm. it? The, the, the crisis, crisis team was great, but I mean, before that, I, I did I... try a few steps, you know, to try and they, they always give you those steps, um, in, in case you're in big trouble. And it was mm. the Samaritans where you could ring up at any time, was it? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, that I think they were a little bit more helpful just because, you know, it was nice to have another person on the other end alone phone. But again, it's something where they will ask you questions and they won't give you your, their opinion. At any point, no, because they're not allowed um, to give you a thing. Yeah. N- no, they're not, and so it must be very difficult for them as well. But that, that I think that helped a little more because at least I was allowed to talk to someone on the mm. phone and tell them exactly what I was feeling. The problem with telling my parents or family is that, however much they love you, th- th- uh, because of how much they love you, every time you say to them something that's you know very personal, something that's that's another step, they get more and more scared. And you can see that in them. And that then that puts you off of telling them anymore. Yeah. Um, so so to have someone who's impartially just sitting there, it's like talking to the wall, but actually it does have ears and it will listen. Yeah. Um, it does have ears. And, and at least you get like an immediate reaction from them, which is not like with this yeah. like thing, you have to wait every, or I did anyway, every two weeks for them to like yeah, review Yeah, mine it. was every week. So I'm Yours a bit was every week, so it's a bit was... better. But like... Mm-hmm. And it basically comes down to, oh, I've seen what you've been working on. This looks really good. But, but it's like, there's such a disconnect between me. You know, if I do it one day and I'm like, and I feel like garbage, I don't have to wait two weeks for them to go, oh, I'm sorry you felt that way. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, yeah. I really need to talk I'm about over the time. It now. Actually, yeah. Like, yeah. or it's turned into something else that's beyond that. You know, like, that, that, that time, that lag between it is not useful. Mm. no i think like like you said with the lag as well is like you might when you write you you only go onto the program to complete it when you're in an okay state you're never going in it when you're actually in like the worst of the worst so again like i filled it in like oh yeah i'm doing well and then like two hours later, I was like, oh, I feel like shit again. But I filled in this. Because for me, the review was meant to be like describing how your whole week was, mm. which is a bit like, well, some days were fine and some days were crap. Like, mm. I think just, just to say that if anyone ever feels that step beyond that, where they feel like, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do serious damage to myself or, you know, that I, I, I think I feel like it's going to go that way then I'd always say to them, just go straight down to A&E. Don't yeah. mess around with going to your doctors or phoning 111 or anything like yeah. that. No, yeah. Go Absolutely. straight down to A&E um, and don't take the risk with it. Um, well, because that's what they told you to do, was to go to A&E. In the and I wish they you. told me that initially. I just felt mm. completely trapped because I was on a yo-yo back and forth from my doctors. They tried to keep putting me on courses similar to yourselves. It felt and silly when they sent you as well. Because, it felt terribly because, silly. Because you weren't like... You know, at that I point, you were like, you, I was not okay. You weren't okay, but you weren't in the worst point of mm. the not being okay. But the thing is, you wouldn't have been able to take yourself to A and E if you. Were. I yeah, it just so happened my doctors they had told lined you up. To go the there. doctors just said, ask me three very simple questions, which is, do you think it's you're gonna do something damage to yourself? And I was like, yes. 
Um, have you? Are you intending to do that? Well, whether I intend to or and I am, I'm going to do it. You know, it's it's not <laughs> okay. it's not that I want to in any way. Um, are you in a, a huge amount of pain? And I was in, uh, you know, like everyone, it was it was indescribable. Now I think back to it, and I can't truly put into words what it was like yeah i just remember being so miserable i wanted to feel anything else than yeah. that miserable but my point was going to be when you went like i know you sort of had imposter syndrome oh, sitting in awful. a&e but i was going to say like don't be put off by that because yeah no 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 if you've got the strength to go to a&e then that's like you know that you're not wasting anyone's time it's no i think imposter syndrome is part of the illness as well such a huge part of it to break through that idea of oh well there's other people who need it more than i do that that i yeah no no you you need to go down there and get sorted out if you feel this way this terrible you need um attention right now then you need to be going down to a and e the a and e is there for that reason Mm. you know Mm. they are there to help you in a real crisis and that that is a real crisis sorry i'm back with the NHS thing, um, yeah, no, definitely. Mm. I think there are people who will definitely think that they're they're taking up space, whatever you know. The A and E is already going to be no. busy, but like, if you need that, you need to go. Don't don't let yeah. any kind of thought of oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not that bad, or any of these things. Like, it's underfunded, and though it may be, and under a lot of pressure, is there take- for us to use it? You know, it's there to help us, and we should we should take advantage of that as much as we can, because yeah. that's the whole point. We should maybe have like a code word that, like, if somebody's if one of us is in that situation, I like, like can just send a text, and then the other person like would go with them, mm. and you don't have to talk about it or anything. You can yeah. just sit with them mm. in A and E. No, I agree definitely. If you need help, then please do go get it. But I think when you're not at that stage. So going back to the yeah, counselling, uh, therapy stuff, even no, 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 it's all good. Um, I was just say like some of it is because you were saying Kat, about how you fill it in when you're in a kind of okay place or a good place. You don't fill it. Mm. I just find with it that I have no motivation whatsoever. There is no mm. part of me that wants to do it. No, literally no, yeah. no part of me that even wants to. And it, I have tried. It's so bizarre to me because. It went in, in the past when I've gone to therapy in person, I have always managed to find this kind of thing of, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, because at least I'll be able to yeah. talk to someone. And so like, even before when I was, when I was at uni and I was having to take a bus to, to the therapy, and it was like an hour long bus ride, whatever, and I'm like, I really can't Ooh. be fucks today. There was something about it that it made me go, no, we can, yeah, we'll do, we'll do it, we'll had- do it a process like a little routine where you could um mm. on the way back just sort of uh de- decompress or something yeah like, like i just get on the bus like and it was the start of the bus route as well so like no one's on it so i go out to the bus get like whatever seat i fucking wanted like put my earphones in and just kind of like not for like it was just an hour of basically like nothing just just me sitting there but like feeling a bit lighter or mm. like yeah. I've been able to talk so in some cases you feel quite emotional but you at least have that time to yourself to kind of yeah reconcile yourself with it before you have to be. exactly so by the time I got home I was like well okay I feel a bit more even if I went upstairs straight away and I was just like oh hey everyone and went upstairs like there was that time between to kind of get on top of it but no I don't have any kind of motivation to do it at the moment I just I, I yeah. see it on there and I think I should do it. Have but, you asked them about trying anything else yet? Uh, I put it on my thing, my next my next review, <laughs> two weeks, and yeah. I, I, just to be like, I think I need it. Because I think it's the thing, is that I think I respond better to talking to someone, even mm. if all they do is mm. sit and go, yeah. Yeah, with the online thing. So I thought that doing it online would be like, oh, I'd be more motivated to do it because mm. it's convenient. It's exactly. at home. I've got the flexibility. It will feel like a university module mm. um, uh, along those lines. And then you're right. It's just, I, oh, I was going to say, I have a feeling that they um, might try and push people towards doing that first mm. because it will be financi- like financially mm. uh efficient i don't yeah. know what the right word is it like, is from a cost point and... of view this is obviously better for them because 
it doesn't it's take like up the first time of seeing people. people you know exactly it you can just yeah. put them on this thing and say oh you do it in your own time you only you know you could have one person that's looking Reviewing after several people, people or... like it doesn't matter yeah. it, it definitely is a yeah you say you have like seven people a day mm. you know that means that 35 people a week they can be mm. looking after mm. which you wouldn't get if you're doing in-person things for sure so we're just saying about um chris with the uh doing the online thing and how just like we're thinking that it's probably like a financially efficient way of doing things the mm. nhs because then they they probably seed out the people who are not gonna uh put the the effort in yeah. which is well, i think it's because like I, th- I think the problem is is for the i can't imagine the percentage of people if you were to ask them does it help i can't imagine what percentage that would be i i, I for me personally i agree with chris i when i'm sad and when i was low the last thing i was going to ever do was fill out some fucking form mm. that was never going to happen was... and when i felt good I didn't want to fill out a form. No, I was like, why am I doing when this? I felt... feel good, yeah. And then in between was like, I can't be bothered. But I know so certain it's any, people that any that would really help with. So yeah, it, no, no, it of is course. Just, and obviously that's, yeah, the cheaper way. It's a I good it's first made... line of like being able to do it. But yeah. the thing that yeah. worries me a bit is that there are people who will feel like I do and they'll start doing it and be like, oh, this is a fucking waste of time. And then they'll just kind yeah. of like, all off the radar, like yeah, they won't well, get I picked up didn't for things. Bother. Yeah, there's a part of me that was like, awful. "Is this even worth it?" Like, oh, I don't even fucking care. But like, that's so counterproductive because I know that like there is actually good help available, and actually I need to just try and explain that and say, "Look, this isn't working. I need something different. We need to do something different rather than doing what." It most like well, a lot of people would do, and I'm not, you know, it's entirely, um, it makes sense of basically it not working out, and you going, oh, well, I'll just deal with it myself, like I always have, which is, it makes a lot of sense, but it, I mean, it's obviously not potentially the right thing to do. Mm. I For think me, that's I know the it's also given me a negative opinion, like uh, a negative attitude towards the next type of therapy mm. thing that they're gonna put me in for like now i'm sort of apprehensive mm. about it like i'm not before i was like this is oh this is great this is gonna be the solution and now i'm like oh great this pop this thing uh in december is probably gonna be a load of shit like mm. i don't know just, oh and the worst thing is my supervisor's like um she, it was like she was selling the program to me when mm. i first said i was interested um, in doing it, she's like, "Yes, we've had so many great responses for this program. It's mm. brilliant." Um, and that was fine until when she started explaining about the new program she wanted me to do. She did the exact same thing. Uh-huh. You went, "Ah, so you're just going to say this about every single mm. program that you like got offer?" And obviously, they're not going to be like, "Oh, it's shit. It's not going to work. You're going to be fucking depressed for your whole life." Mm. But yeah. I don't know, there is that falseness with it, right? You want like someone to be genuine with something. you, and when you start thinking mm. they're not being genuine with you, you're like, oh. It reminds uh. me of those, like, dial-up uh, TV advert things <laughs> where you, they're selling mops. Yeah, yeah. Like, this, this, this will change your life. Look, you can mop the ceiling. Look, like This, this is the best spins. mop you've ever used. This will never <laughs> let you down. It's your forever mop. Yeah. It's I... only £500. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember going in... Um... And, you know, this is way before I, I then went back in to, to get, not section, but, you know, they, they that was the options on the table. You can yeah. either go to the crisis team, you can stay with them for, you know, the next two months and they'll come and check on you every day. Or you can go and get section, which one would you like? Yeah. Um, but this this is a while before that. This is about four months when I, f- I first started getting the problems, actually, when I first started dating Kat. And I knew it was going to be an issue. I knew it was. So straight away, I came along and said, listen... I need to go on to um, antidepressants just to mm. make this 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 easier because otherwise, you know, you, you're going to ruin a relationship in Are your you life. Are you telling me I made you depressed? I'm joking. <laughs> you seem like a very earnest question. Um, <laughs> it did feel like a very... Are you telling me you made me depressed? No, I didn't. Um, but, you know, I just... I knew that I didn't deal well when 
the worst thing is when you're into a relationship um for me with mental health just because you have to show another person a, that side of you mm. and if you don't like it or you're you're susceptible to to more mental health problems or you know like them to get worse and worse i think a relationship sometimes it can make things great for a time and then suddenly you know you you just you have to get to know yourself more and more and you have to open that side of yourself so i say so i knew that i was going to have more mental health problems when i kind of met cats so i said right let's start off on the right foot let's go and um let's go and get some uh antidepressants they put me on them and then a month later i came back and i was completely crazy and yeah. i mean that in the most sincere way yeah. crazy it wasn't like in a depressed like where you could communicate you're when you're saying crazy it's not like you know when you're you're not using the word describe uh, crazy to describe being depressed or being anxious no or no like no, no no it was you my were, thoughts were so erratic erra yeah erratic i that's was what, everywhere my my head was i think using I was the word thinking, crazy is yeah, not no, helpful in this sorry context. no no in this context sorry that is not a, a very and it was <laughs> that's not the best term to use is it, was, it really it wasn't like but that's how I, I felt it was like um it was paranoia. Yeah, it was paranoia. Terrible paranoia. Believing everything was was after me and mm. coming to get me. And but truly believing that. And it sounds so ridiculous now because I, I can't imagine anything sounding so you know, all the thoughts I had. But you know, then again every relationship I would have, my parents, cat, friends, I would go and see them and I'd think that they've been talking about me. I think that mm. there was premeditated ideas in their head about how much they hated me you and yeah. that they just put my, up with me. You thought all of um, my friends hated you for ages. And it wouldn't matter if I had a lovely time, saw mm. them, yeah. we all got on like amazingly, I'd leave, a day later I'd be thinking about how they all hated me again. Yeah. And this this was everyone hated me. I thought I was, uh, I just, I believed that every single person was not plotting against me, but had these these ideas about me. Uh -huh. um, and again, I, I say, I went in there to the doctor, sat down, and, you know, I was crying my eyes out. So I told him all of this, said how... And it was very clear at that point, I think, um, when I opened up how, how you know, how much of a difficult situation I was in. And he literally just upped the dosage and sent me out of the room. Mm -hmm. It was less than five minutes um, of me pouring my whole heart out for him to go, okay, we're going to up your medication and we'll see how you get on. Come back to us in four months. Four months later, I was even worse. And by that, by that point, I'd started burning myself. Um, and, you know, that's when I, then that's when it was kind of game over for me at that point. You know, I was either going to do something really silly or I was going to get real help. But again, they'll just keep bouncing you off. They'll just, yeah. they'll just keep, Sending you off on, on little errands. Oh, try this, try that, try that. Oh, the other. yeah, and they were useless. And I mean, apart from the fact when I came in, he said, right, I put you on to um, Healthy Minds, which is the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so there is a six-month waiting list. Do you think you can hang on? I don't know if I can hang on a day. Yeah. And you're asking me for six months? Um, so that that kind of... I know that they're backed up, up the wazoo. I know that, and I know they're trying their best. But there are some people out there who... It doesn't need to get to the stage... Where they they uh, you know re they've tried to commit suicide or it doesn't need to get to that stage sometimes. I yeah. think like medication reviews are I, well. The thing yeah. that frustrates me so mm. much is that there is a genetic test that you you like spit into a fucking tube and it shows you what drugs that you are are going to be highly like reactive to, mm. um, big due to like it's. Enzyme, I, d I can't remember what it was, but yeah, like, there's when a percentage I got my... test of what will work with your yeah. So when I got my DNA test, uh, just like heritage DNA test, and I had my health thing in it as well, it said um, that I had what was it like a low low response with drugs like sertraline something like that. So I went on sertraline for a while to try and help with sleep and stuff. Didn't I, I did not notice anything on it. Whereas for Pierce, you that like was your gold dust for I, a long time. I remember telling this guy that he put me on to citralopram. Which um, is one of the drugs listed as being, like, one that can flip you. Like, either way, it can either help you. Some people love citralopram. Like, we've got a friend who's on it. Yeah. Who does very well on it. Um, well, like, assuming <laughs> it from what they've said. They're yeah, no, no, the, yeah. Um, but then that was your kryptonite. Like, but for me, is, sertraline yeah. was the greatest thing in the world. I, that was the thing that I was stuck on for, and it just worked for me. A just very small dosage, 
But I told this guy, the doctor, listen, I've been on search something prior, sorted me right out, I was absolutely fine. He heard this and went, oh, okay, we're going to try citralopram because he was used to that drug. Mm. He was used to giving that to other people and it working. So he gave it, gave it to me. Of course, then, as I say, when I came back, uh, actually, I don't even know if it was a month. It feels a lot longer to me. I think it was like it was two weeks. A, yeah, it was, it, the whole the whole thing was a relatively short thing, but it felt like longer at the time mm. because every day was a struggle. A real struggle. Um, but I think the thing was that every time he, I came back, he'd give me more of this drug and I'd get 10 times worse and come back again mm. and I'd come back again and come back again. And at no point did he think to himself, ah, maybe it's the drug that people react really badly to. No, 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 we're just going to keep upping him. We're just going to keep upping him and upping him. And to me now, looking back, that just seems like a real, not even lack of care, because I think he did care, but I don't think he really there's thought it training. through. There's a training, yeah, there's something wrong you know, with the training. I was getting depressed off of that because I felt so manic and I didn't know what to do. I was becoming upset with myself and feeling even lower so it was kind of the depression was feeding off of that now i'm healing with humor <laughs> sorry i was just thinking about um i was thinking about the medication thing actually i was thinking about how every doctor that i've seen um and every other every other people i've heard about um when like when i first went on medication they said okay we're gonna start you off on search reading. And yeah. some people respond, but they made it clear. Like some people respond really well to this, and some people don't. And if you don't, yeah. then we can find something different for you. And so they make yeah. it very clear from the outset. They're not saying and it's definitely going me. to work. They're not saying it's definitely going to do anything. They're saying we don't know, and this is something that we know people respond to well. You might not, yeah. so try it. See how it goes. If you are in a really particularly bad state then immediately come back and see us. Otherwise, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. We'll assess how things are going. And if things are not improving or, you know, there are any side effects coming in, then you're on such a low dose that we can take you off, find an alternative mm. that works for you, maybe Citalopram, maybe something else, and then we can try that instead. And I think that's what I've heard from... There are some people I know who search routine did not work for at all. It made them mm. in a, it put them in a much worse position, actually. And so they had mm. to change yeah. up and do something else. And I can't... It it's sad that there are doctors out there who are so I don't know um, who would Narrow go minded. in with yeah who would go in with the yeah. idea of oh well here's this citalopram and this will this will fix it and every time you go back and saying no it's not they're going oh you just need more of it it's like mm. that's such a ridiculous way to approach it that I can't believe most doctors would do that that that's just yeah. I, crazy I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you can go. Uh, yeah, no, I, I completely agree, Chris, especially because I was saying, I, I, he was saying to me, well, I, I just don't think it's kicked in yet. I think you need more of it. All I knew was that I was getting worse every mm. day as it went along. So mm. I thought that I was getting worse. I thought that my head was getting worse and worse mm. and that actually the antidepressants were trying that, you know, were working against that and trying the hardest. So I felt even more depressed because I thought, oh, mm. my God. If this high amount of antidepressants is not doing anything, and I'm just getting worse every single day, mm. then uh, surely I'm I'm a hopeless case. Surely yeah. there is no way through for me here. Yeah. Um, and then, as I say, I went to the crisis team. A few doctors there who who work on this kind of stuff all the time. Within two seconds, they said, "What are you on?" I said, "Sad Chalaprem." He said, "Right, okay, we're going to take you straight off of that. We're going to put you on searching." And within mm -hmm. two weeks, I was fine. Um, and you know what, I, th that's a miracle case for a lot of people. I'm so grateful that it was that straightforward for me. Really, mm. really grateful. But there's a lot of people out there where that's not the case. Well, you know, they, they do go, um, and have, have medication and change it and change it and change it. And they never find that. Mm. Um, so I was very grateful. But again, this, this guy, just because he, again, it wasn't like he didn't care. It, it was just like, he didn't think of it. But because no. he just kept doing it to me, he, and, and, you know, I was almost like a guinea pig of, of just, oh, let's do it again, let's do it again. He, he could have killed me, mm. you know, and he really could have done. And again, yeah. I don't think he was a bad guy. I just think he didn't think about it, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's, I, I think that's the most important thing. You are, when you're talking to people, though, that's the person you are at kind of the mercy of. That's the, the, the 
the guy in front of the, the bouncer in front of the door if you know mm. what i mean you have to appeal to them to let you you in to a lot of these things and get you help yeah. um so it really it does depend a lot of the time some people sometimes some, there are some dogs out there who just will pop you off really especially if like me you you you, you try and hide everything you try and make it sound not as bad as it is you know yeah. to everyone so when you go to the doctor you're still doing the same thing you're still going oh yeah um yeah well actually i'm i'm very depressed and yeah. you've got a smile on your face and that's what i do i try and make a joke out of it i would yeah. find it very difficult to say it outright in a sensible way so um are you okay sorry i keep looking at your face you really got the displeasure. um so i would try and hide I couldn't say anything seriously, so that's how I was always kind of laughing. And they took that as, you know, me me not being that bad. Mm. So, um, yeah, it, it, I think it's every doctor. But then there's been some doctors I've had who have been amazing. Mm. Straight away, off the boat, we'll turn around and go, you're, you know, like the psychiatrist I had in the crisis team. She said, so I can tell that you um, hide a lot of your, your problems and pain behind humour. Um, or an attempt at humour, <laughs> yeah. she said. Oh, that cut me so deeply when she said an attempt at humour. But she, she, she got the weight of me. She knew yeah. straight away that I, I wasn't right, um, and she, she was really helpful to me. All and all, it took was that one person that I met where it changed everything for me. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I guess I got lucky on that scale. But yeah. And I've had people who have said to me, like in the past, I think I've mentioned it, like. I've been at work and at all kinds of places where people have gone, oh, you you seem so well put together. You know, you seem so on top of things. I didn't, I didn't possibly yeah. think you could be... And I was like, yes, well, that's because I've become particularly good at masking it because I'm trying to just get through the... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get through a day. And the only way I know how to do that is to effectively go in and and be sarcastic and make jokes out of things and, and mm. you know, make these things and make it into a make it into a joke that I'm the depressing guy in the corner rather than actually admit that's actually the reality and it's it's a pretty fucking dark place because I just can't quite, you know, face that really. And I don't really want I think I get myself sometimes into the mindset of thinking, oh, I just can't I can't be bothered to explain to someone the like intricacies of why I'm not feeling good in a particular day. And so if they ask me, yeah. oh yeah, you're okay, I'm like, yeah, fine. Because I really just can't be bothered to keep explaining it. Because either, you know, I I don't have the motivation or I have already Sometimes told them before. Well. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you you've told people so Which many times that you um you become reluctant to keep saying it because in your brain you're thinking they're gonna think i'm just a broken record they're gonna think i'm just mm. saying this thing right and they'll you know they'll start questioning it why you know why are you not getting any better so you, lots of it is you get in your own head about how they'll react before you've said it and so you just don't and whatever but um it definitely there have been people who have gone oh you know you seem so on top of it and i had one doctor who i saw for a medication review who Basically, I think I mentioned it before, and I I forget more of it because I think part of my brain just tries to suppress the thought of it because it was so not a good experience. Um, but I it was back at uni, and I I went in and I explained, you know, this is this is what's going on, and and this is why. And his whole approach seems to be okay, but when are you coming off the medication? When are you mm. when are you going to stop taking it? I was like, well, yeah. I don't, I don't know, like when, you know, when when I'm ready, when I'm ready. He's like, yeah, you know, well, most people are normally on it for six months, and you've been on it for however well, long you've been on it at the take time. Like six months to settle in. Yeah, so it was like however long I've been. I maybe I've been up like six, seven months at the time. He's like, yeah, most people normally come off, um, and feel better about now, and so I came away from it thinking, oh, so I, I'm not. I must be a problem then. It must be a me problem because other people are doing fine after six months. So why am I not doing fine? Mm. And it, it was that invalidating experience of someone basically being like, you should be fine now. Where it's like, 
and it, it took me a while and talking to people and actually another few appointments where I realized he just had no idea, even didn't care in his case enough nah. to help me. Because I, you know, you see people after that and before that, doctors who would talk to me, and even though I might have come in and looked fine, and you know, come to the appointment and I'm dressed fine, I look like a, you know, my hygiene's good, all of this kind of stuff. There's nothing outwardly that says I am depressed. They've been able to kind of yeah. see through it and and actually understand that there's something there, even if they're not quite sure what they understand. There's something here, and you know, we, we can help you with it. And, and it, it just makes such a difference. I think there are a lot of good people in, in mm. healthcare and on like front line of these things. And there are some very, very shit people and very like either maliciously or through some kind of misguided belief in something like with the Sazalapram thing, who, who are just so yeah. convinced that that's what they should do. And I think it really, you have to, you do sometimes have to, you have to challenge them a bit, actually. And if they start mm. going down a line of making it seem like, you know, you're like, you have to, and it's difficult because you trust these people, but you have to say, well, actually, I don't think you're right. Actually, mm. this yeah. is wrong. And it's sometimes it's, it, and it's very difficult to do that. And in that moment, you know, when, when a doctor is handing you a thing saying, we're going to give you more cisalopram, that that's going to fix you. You mm. trust them to know that, but. I guess it, it it's where it helps having someone else who's aware of these things or being able to have like a, another opinion on these things for someone to actually yeah. challenge it and, and get you the help you really need. Because I think that's the big thing is that you can have help, which is there available and like offered to you and it just doesn't work for you. And that's fine because not everything will work for you. There's no one size fits all treatment for any of the, mental health no. kind of conditions out there because if there was we wouldn't have them you know it would be no. we'd have solved it so if it if something isn't working for you then maybe it just means that you haven't found the right treatment yet and mm. feel free feel empowered to go back and actually say we need to try something different this isn't cutting it absolutely chris and we found before going down to the doctors me and you cat that you said to me previously, you've gone to the doctors and had a lot more issues with getting them to listen. Oh yeah, to you. they don't listen when it's just me. They, no. I have to take peers with me, and it will be stuff like about my insomnia or like contraception. Well, I was going to say earlier, um, it reminded me of um, going to the doctors and saying, "Oh, with the coil thing, you know, they'd recommended that to try and sort out my periods because I was having mm. really bad period pains and." Um, like just issues in that sense and um they were like oh you know we have a lot of positive reviews with the coil because it can often stop people having periods for a certain amount of time um and i remember saying oh this contraception's hormonal i was gonna avoid hormonal contraception because um I've had problems with hormones from having the implant. So and she, I was like, do you, do you know, like, do people tend to do okay on this with the hormones and stuff? And she was like, oh, well, personally, um, I've, I've never experienced any, like, uh, hormone issues. Like, she was saying that she had the coil herself. And she, she basically said that she's never experienced mental health issues or hormone, hormone imbalance or she like she was talking about herself and she was like yeah I don't really understand it's not my expertise so I'd probably recommend chatting to another doctor about that mm. I remember being a bit like oh um South African doctor very blunt um nice but just like obviously that's not the area that you I'd go to chat to her about mental health. Sorry, I'm remembering was, I saw she, her before she once. She was the one that went, had was funny with Pierce as well. <laughs> when I came down there and yeah, I think it was like the second or third time I burnt myself and this one was bad and um, I walked in Jeez, and I sat down do that? and I sat down she said, why are you here? And I said, I've, I've really burnt myself and I pulled off the thing and she looks at it and I, I don't know, why did you do that? And I just sat there and was like, well, I don't know, really. <laughs> oh, you're question. silly. And I was like, oh, oh, 
Oh, it's silly. And, oh, and like, silly me. She's very nice. And when I say like, oh, she's South African, my like, you know, a lot of my family for people like obviously Chris knows, but a lot of my family is South African, and there's this, this is like really blunt quality, <laughs> which comes with being South African, I think. And she just she has that, and it's like mental health, like mental illnesses just don't exist. No. I don't know. And so when I'd said about the like contraception thing, she's like, well, I don't know about that. I wasn't going to wait a month to then go and speak to another doctor to then Longer decide. Longer sometimes. Well, yeah, it's, it's been about two month wait, like month and a half wait. Um, so I was just like, okay, like I'll get it. And then I guess if it fucks me up, then I'll get it out. Um, which is now what I'm looking at doing, so that the, went well. The, the funny thing is, though, when we then went along, and I was there as well when we went to the doctor to talk about this, um, do you remember you walked in through the door with that doctor? Oh, the male doctor. The male doctor. Oh, yeah. And that, as oh, she walks in through the door... That was bad. Goes, oh, hello, Katrina. And then... No, you didn't know my name, oh, not, did they? No. Well, you said Katrina, oh, and then yeah, he went, oh, hello, yeah. yeah. And you walked in, and then I was behind you. You went to close the door on me, and I said, oh, sorry, I'm coming in as well. You've never seen lo- someone look so, so miserable and so angry that I was going to be there. He really? honestly then got a grump on yeah. because he felt like he was kind of being cornered. He felt like I was there to to reinforce the point, which I was. You know, you were, I, yeah. I was well, there. To, is... I was there to make sure that she just didn't get fobbed off and we walk away again with <laughs> he nothing. Got a lot done to be fair, he got everything done. I was like, right, now we're going to do this. And he was a diabetes specialist, so the problems I went to him with were very much. He was the one who then, like, you know how I've said with the ADHD assessment, like it was a bit odd because I've gone through the NHS, but then I got a Psychiatry UK link as well. Mm. Um, he, I think he is the one who then put me through to Psychiatry UK, like so, both like so, it's going through both channels now, and I guess I'll just see which one happens first and then cancel the other one. I don't really know, but like he did get stuff done, but it was like Got the whole you, list done, yeah. And I was sat there, and every time he kind of diverged from the point, I was like, no, 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 we're going back on this. Mm. What, what are you doing? You cheeky man. But the, the, I... and do you remember in Oxford with the young, the young GP who I liked? <laughs> Um, we went, no, don't even, I know what you're thinking of. <laughs> I know you do. No, Sorry. no, that's too far. I'm not going to say okay. that. Um, of course I'm not going to say that. Up. She's <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> um the, oh, I went to him about the insomnia thing. I just, uh, and you were like, she doesn't sleep. Cause he was, yeah, cause he she said, does not sleep. He was sort of trying to be like, oh, okay. Oh, you're sure young, you've not had a rough uni- night? Yeah. Oh, yep. And Bit drinking, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you're like, no, student, and then she doesn't, doesn't, doesn't like, sleep. She doesn't sleep. I, it's ruining my life. Like, give us. I get up at six a.m. She keeps me up till four, <laughs> the, uh, and it's very straightforward. It's been two months of this now. Please, please. <laughs> Drunk I mean, when she says insomnia, she means it. Mm. You know, um, and uh, so it it just it just stops them in their tracks because suddenly they can't just sum it off as some. Oh well, that could be that. Let's on to the next thing. Um, they they have someone in the room goes no, this is and, and there's someone who's around you, yeah. someone who can testify mm. to it. And I, I think for anyone who's got someone that they're open with, and not not just like open with and you know feel nervous for it, but to have some another person that you can take into the doctors with you, who can get your point across. It's much easier doing it for someone else than it is for yourself in mm. those situations. You could, you know, to hear all the points, make sure you don't forget anything, but also make sure you get everything out that you want to say. To have someone else in the room with you is invaluable in that mm. that sense because, um, yeah, it just, I, th- I feel like there's a lot more progress made a lot faster as opposed to coming out of the docks and thinking, oh, I, I don't really know if that was of any benefit to me. I remember, like, what, like, the, mo- the most upset I've come out of the doctors was uh, in Oxford um, and mm. I was still, it was after I had sepsis, like not, it was a few months after and I, like, well, maybe two months after and I'd just gone back to uni um, and I was just like really, I was sleeping like 16 hours a day and still like, but like not in a, there's de- so me now, I struggle with being tired but I know that's because of sleeping pills. Whereas before it was like physically exhausted and I was ill all the time and like I was just physically unwell and exhausted from that. Um, and with so I went to the doctors was like, look, I'm not right. They were like, oh, you've got tonsillitis. I was like, oh, I didn't even realise. Um, and they like, like, okay, you, 
you're, you've, I think I had another infection as well. They're like, you're, you're not well, and you, I think this could be a post ICU syndrome. This, this doctor said, and she had a nurse with her as well. Um, and she's like, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on on post ICU syndrome. So I'm gonna just like see if my colleague will give a second opinion and just mm. like see if they can add any information chat to you with it about it um she's like oh i hope you don't mind like i've got to see another patient now like if you just wait in the waiting room then like sh she'll see you she spoke to her quickly in the corridor and then went in so i then went to this other doctor pierce wasn't with me this time because i uh, i was literally just about to give a presentation at uni as well and i was getting a bit stressed because the t like the time was going on the first appointment was late then there was this gap to see this other doctor and i'm like oh my god i've got my fucking assessment um Anyway, I go in, and then this woman is basically like, you need to take vitamins and Ugh. drink water. And, like, that was... I just went from... Do you oh, run? <laughs> it was pretty, like, it was pretty much, like, no... Yeah, no, th there was nothing. Oh, awful. And I came out and I just burst into tears. And then I had my assessment. Um, and then... This was just before, well, this was as COVID hit. Mm. And then my, one of my lecturers then started fucking having a go at everyone saying that we were all spreading this new disease called COVID and that we were awful people because us students were killing old people and we have no consideration for Absolutely anyone but ourselves. And, I, and she was saying about, oh, none of you are high risk, so you wouldn't know and all this. And then the doctors had literally just said like, oh, yeah, you've got to be careful now because of COVID and you like just had sepsis. <laughs> And I just, that whole day, I was then afterwards, I was like, Meh, oh. I'm going to die. No one well, it, it goes to demonstrate <laughs> to you, really, that if you don't push for it and, um, you know, not even if you don't push for it, even if you do push for it, to get them sometimes to do something is a real hard task. When Kat yeah. came back and she had had sepsis, just had sepsis, and they said the first thing you need to do when you get back to oh, England, yeah, you need to go scan. and get a scan. Oh, I was going to go straight to A&E. Yeah, you need to go straight to A&E. And you, it's pretty much like you need to check straight in, you know, like life or death kind of stuff. Yeah. We went to the We doctors. got an emergency GP appointment because the thing was, I was like, what what good is going to be sitting in A&E for like eight hours mm. with a bunch of other sick people like that's just going to be more dangerous in my opinion so we was like we'll get an emergency appointment at the gp i'll go there uh first thing in the morning and then see what they suggest because they might tell me to go to hospital or whatever but at least like i've just cut out that step and yeah i didn't but the thing was though, it was a south african she went, doctor yeah, south african. <laughs> shit's given when we walked no, in she there, she was very. She was like, "Oh, you're the girl from Germany." Oh, no, like, you're the girl from Germany. <laughs> oh, we, we okay. We all know about you. So we all, we all know about you. We've heard how bad it's been for you. Okay, so we're going to do pretty much nothing. Oh, uh, they said, go home and they uh, said, keep "Oh, well. what drugs are you on?" And I, I had this really high dose of amoxicillin. And they were like, "We don't prescribe that over the, uh, over here." Um, such high dose. They were like, "Oh, that's the good stuff." But like. I think she gave me some anti-nausea, extra anti-nausea tablets and like I was meant to have a kidney scan and other other things but like none of this happened. She had just come out of the hospital in Germany and they really didn't they want didn't to let her let, out. But it was just Really they didn't want that... to let her out. So that, I'd say even with something as, you know, as dangerous as that, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we see the signs everywhere now for sepsis. It mm -hmm. was still all the ambulances. Oh, like oh, even with someone like that, someone laugh. who has definitely had it, someone who you know nearly died of it. They took us back over here as soon as we went into the NHS. Oh, okay. We couldn't even get anything moving on that. So mental health, God knows how hard that. Well, mm -hmm. I do know how hard that is. We mm -hmm. all do, but you know that that's even harder to do. So if we couldn't get that going, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it just goes to speak really that. Sometimes the doctors. Sometimes you meet a great doctor, and they'll take you, and then they'll, they'll they'll be taking care of you, and that's a general care. But a lot will just try and bob off and kind of, you know, kind of keep you moving on the conveyor belt line. So it is important for every single person to make sure they're either it, an advocate for themselves or they have somebody who's yeah, going to mm. be, and make know. sure that there's progress every time, or you feel that there's something that's moving in a direction, not just oh, I don't really know what happened in that meeting. Mm. Um, Okay, I'll just see how it goes. That's not the answer. You want to make sure that there's some progress made. And Something I think happens. people can like think that they're being um, 
confrontational or something but it's like you know obviously there's a no. way that you do these things you don't go and go you are a fucking bastard and like <laughs> start hurling abuse at them but no you no, have no, the, no. yeah you, you can stand your ground in a way that's respectful but mm. it's like well i personally don't think that's the right course of action and uh, you, know, you can challenge mm. them on it in a way that is respectful, respectful. but also yeah. standing up for what you actually need because like if if you can, what am I trying to say? If if they can find something which is able to fix your problem or mm. seems to fix your problem quickly, most people will mm. take that option just as a kind of, it's mm. like doing a job or something. If if there's a faster way to do something that gives the same result, you're like, oh, we'll do that then. Fuck the, fuck the other way. So people, but you have to be able to say, no, actually, it's not yeah. just that, you know, I'm not sleeping a little bit right now. It's I haven't been able to sleep properly for a long time, and it's causing me real issues, and it's causing my partner real issues. And yeah, we need to do something about. I I really think that's yeah, be an advocate for yourself, yeah. or, or have someone who can be in that situation. But then that's a privileged situation as well, because that that requires me. Like I I didn't have that until I was no. in a relationship with Piers. So you know, like I. I'm not going to take my dad. I'm like, am I? I'm not going to be like, hi, dad. Can you go and talk to the doctor about my parents? If you needed me to come with you to a doctor's and do it, I would would happily do that for you. It's like obviously not Mm. feasible all the time because of where we are in life. But if you needed it, I would find a way of trying to make that work because it's like, I I know that how important that would be. And I know, you know, I know you. And I know that if you say you need help, I know that you need help. I, I don't yeah. for a second think that it's anything other than a genuine need. Um, yeah. yeah. So I 100% think it's a thing. I was going to change topic entirely. Mm. Semi. How entirely. dare you? Well, I was going to talk about something that I've been thinking, because I was thinking about the message I sent you the other week. Um, the voice message I sent you, I should say. Oh, yeah. Um, so I... And it's, I actually sent one in my Discord as well, actually, after I sent you a message. Basically, Aww. it got to a couple of weeks ago, um, and it was the day that, I think it was the day that Liz Truss resigned. Oh, yeah. I think it was almost certainly that day. And I, something just, I was just angry. I was yeah. so angry at so many things. They're like, Everything had come to a head because I'm someone who I I don't think I'm like a doom scroller necessarily, but I do want to know what's going on in the world, and I I think it's mm. I think it's actually important for me to know what's going on because I'm so glad you you do it because I know that I need to do it, yeah. but like I just don't have it in me at this moment in time. No. But the thing is, because you do it, I like. That that motivates me to have a bit more of an interest, and that mm. sounds silly, but you know somebody needs to you. Your mental health can be sacrificed for the sake of. I'm happy that. to do. <laughs> I'm happy to do. It. But like, yeah, I. It's for me personally. It it really is important to at least know the basics of what's going on in, in my country, and maybe what's going on around the world, and to know these things because, you know, I'm in a privileged position, and I recognise that of being able to, to a lot a lot of the kind of bad things in the world I'm luckily shielded from in one way or another but actually I think that that's not a reason to turn away and go well everything's fine because I'm okay actually I I I don't I I can't really do that it doesn't sit right with me but no this day this day everything had come because I just it, it felt like the world was like there's this new song I was listening to the other day, literally called We Are Fucking Fucked. And I was like, <laughs> that perfectly does it. Because that day, like, Liz Truss had fucked off after she'd messed everything up. Like, and you were seeing these stories about people who couldn't afford, people who were on, like, nurses in the NHS, for example, who were, like, So should be working... on a wage that can... Support... Exactly. Yeah. Working so hard, you know, this thing explaining how they've had to go to a food bank and they've had to cut down on the electricity they're using and the heat they're using. Think about the fact that some people are literally going to not be able to afford to heat their homes this year. 
there was this really th- this thing I read the other day that was like some people have already planned that they'll turn on the heat for Elizabeth on Christmas Day as a bit of a treat. And I was like, yeah, yeah, what a perverse and ridiculous mm. like, like all of these things that add up to the cost pressures, the fact that you know half the world hates each other because either it's Russia invading Ukraine and like that ridiculous situation, people dying, people in Pakistan and other places in affected Iran by climate well, change with... in Iran with the pro- like yeah, all of these things uh, build yeah. up, and I was just so angry. That in 2022, we could be in this situation. And on top of that, I like, I'd been, I feel like I'd been working. I feel like, no, I had been working very hard. You, like, you've been. In my brain, there was this thing, and I don't know what it is because it's so stupid. I, I, well, it's not stupid. I think it's bound up with other things. There was this feeling of, oh, I need to do this because otherwise people will think I can't do my job. And it became like this. I've, it's almost like a manic almost this week almost of like being so convinced that I need to to get this thing done and but it came from this thing of so something had basically had, the projects that as we thought would happen about a week before they suddenly changed it and it was going to be a lot more difficult and I was like okay very right, fine so I need to and I, I was like in my brain just the thought that was in my brain is, I can't let this fall behind anymore. I'm not going to let this fall behind anymore. And so I pushed myself to this ridiculous task that really could not be done within a week. And shock, surprise. You're not going to get paid any extra for that no, either, are you? No, like that's just lost time, effectively, because of this weird, misguided thing of trying to get it done. I didn't get it done because it couldn't be done within a. No. I could have worked 24 hours a day for five days and it still would not have been done. Um, no. there's just no way because it was, it was too and it, I mean it got pretty damn close I mean great but actually I put this responsibility on myself and it's like why was I doing that because yeah, actually the reason this has happened is not my fault I'm still trying to act within a previous time scale so but if, any, if anyone asks us why we're behind that's not even my job to justify it. That's my manager's job to justify it because they're the ones mm. who are responsible for it. I'm just doing the work. But yeah, it, you know, you embrace this kind of talk, to- and I've seen it online. People talking about this kind of like weird, toxic overworking yourself because of some kind of weird thing about career progression or wanting to succeed or yes. hoping that something good will come of it, and it- and almost just hoping for a win because when everything else is so shit. And everything else in the world seems continuously awful. But I just want to win. I just want a win. You know, I want to do this thing and, and, it, and it balance out some of this stuff. So, like, yeah. I was doing all that. All, all of this stuff together, I think my head just felt like it was exploding. And this week, yesterday, um, no, sorry, Friday, I came back from work and I felt broken. Genuinely mm. broken. Like, I just sat down in my chair. And I just sat a uh, solid half an hour, did not move, didn't move, didn't say anything. Didn't That's because you physical light on. unwellness as well then. Yeah, and I was completely yeah. done. And it was because I'd worked so hard, but also because I was thinking about all these things going on. I was I'm embarrassed, actually, that in 2022, I can turn on the news and see, oh, there are people who are starving in the UK. There are people who won't be able to keep their homes this winter in the UK. I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. How can that be the case? How can that be a situation when there's all this like money out there and there's all this stuff going on? You know, Elon Musk's out there just casually buying Twitter for some ridiculous amount of money. And like, what, what do you mean there's not enough money for someone that. to heat yeah. their house? What do you mean? That's ridiculous. What do you mean that like we're not taking climate change to... And it just overwhelms you. There's no yeah. recovery time for anything because you're just. There's always some weird. There's always something and, going on, and all I really wanted, and and want almost, was literally nothing, like a week or two. Nothing. I want nothing to happen. 
and I just want to be able to sleep, wake up, and catch up on all the shit that is like on my to do list, which is I'm sure it just grows. Like I don't think it gets any shorter. It just keeps getting yeah. longer and longer and longer. I just life is very overwhelming. I think. I feel what. And when you're not in a good place, or even if you are in a good place, it is a struggle, and it's very easy to to feel like, like I think I compared it to someone like. It's like when you're in, you're swimming or something, and you stop because you're 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 a bit tired, and you think, oh, I'll just tread water for a bit. Mm. But you think that the ground is like closer than it is, and so you're yeah, like, whoa, 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 and you're panicking and like doing, and it feels like I'm in that stage, and I've been in that stage for a while, and I'm looking up at someone on the side, like a lifeguard, and I'm like, could you just jump in and save me? Why are you not doing anything? Why are you just sat there looking at me, like? Yeah. Help me. Help me help me and you look around other people are in the same situation. You just it just seems so relentless. And it's, I think the uh, thing is, Chris, that you was that? that you oh, I, 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 I think in terms of what's going on now, I mean just just to address the first bit, I mean I mean, apart from anything else, burning yourself out. Um and then you know, we've all been privy to that at one point or another in our lives where we do too much. And we override us, work ourselves to the point of, of insanity. But the thing is, as human beings, we need to go home and do something we enjoy. Mm. Whether it's, it's a little thing, uh, for me it's, it's probably game, or it is gaming, yeah. but it's something that is a pointless activity within itself. But it's, you know, if you were to look at it, what, what, what are you achieving there? Well, nothing really, but I love it. You know, yeah. I, I really enjoy it. Um, and we need that every day, something where... You know, we don't have to, things aren't, aren't, aren't you know, we, we don't have to complete a task, or we don't have to do our work, or something that is, is pivotal to our lives, it has to be, you know, something that is just slightly separate from that, I think is so important. So, you know, I'd say I think something like just even, you know, just for an hour, even just sitting there, and being able to have some relief, or just not think too heavily, and actually, you end up coming back stronger to your work, if you do mm. that, I have anyway, previously, if I walk away, for a little bit, I'll be much more productive when I come back. But um, as I say, I, I think with you, Chrissy, as well, you know, you, you, it's such a lovely thing that you kind of do take the weight of the world on your shoulders more literally. And as you say, everyone should feel that way. And if everyone did feel that way, we wouldn't have all the problems we have now. What is, yeah, um, what is the people who, how did you get in? Hello. Um, it's not everyone should feel, because like some people feel it, it's the, it, it's the people like Elon Musk who need to No, no, but if everyone about thought today. about these moral and, and thought about the bigger picture, like Chris's, yeah. then the, the problems wouldn't be there. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, and also, I think that some people will say, well, why don't you just stop caring about the, like, things going on in the world? Um, I know lots of people who say that. Oh, well, just don't care about it. Just stop thinking about it. And it's like, well, that might be nice for you to do. And I really hope mm. that you mm. can do that. In fact, I desperately hope that you can do that and switch off for a bit, because I would. It is fucking depressing but to be thinking it, about it and even. empathizing and like. And I don't mean in a cr- I genuinely, if you can somehow switch off, great. I can't do that because I. It's just not how my brain functions. I. I. I, not sound like I'm. I, why am I put no? Like, I. I have a lot of empathy. And I, I really yeah. spend a lot of time thinking about other people and what they're going through and try and think mm-hmm. there's a way that I can help them or do something or do anything to help them because that's all I really want to do. Um, yeah. And I'm desperate for it. So, you know, if you can somehow switch off, great. But it's actually not useful for me for someone to say, um, well, just stop caring about it. Well, I can't. Mm. I can't stop Mm. caring about it, and I'm not going to stop caring about it, and that's a ridiculous thing to say. And I'm actually kind of glad, Chris, from the last time we spoke, um, that you're seeing it in a better light, in a better light, better light now. Um, You know, you're seeing that that empathy as as a, I I, I would hope, at least we do, see it as um, such a strong and and great characteristic of yeah yours. Mm. um it's a big part and, of what makes you you yeah you w- wouldn't want you to lose that ever and to say that you know to say stop caring in, in a kind of 
um, you know, in, in a short term sense, you know, that, that does sound, oh, yeah, just, just, okay, uh, 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 theoretically, that makes sense. But obviously, for you, that's not, not going to ever work, because, as you say, you've got a lot of empathy, how can you walk around on a planet and not think about everyone else in it, or mm-hmm. just, just blind yourself to everything else going on around you? Oh, it's all great. Yeah. Um, There's a part of me that when, I, when people say stop, stop caring, I'm like, well, can you start caring? Or? Can you yeah. can you care a little bit? Because if you cared a little bit, and people stop, like yeah. you cared a little bit more, maybe there wouldn't be all these things to worry about. There's all these things going on because there's so many people who are like, oh, well, I just don't care about it because it's not my problem. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are part of the problem by not even stopping to think for a second about that. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. I feel you. No, you're right. No, I do. It is like a it's it's one thing I think I'm learning more about. Definitely, I think from when I actually had in person therapy and things, and before, I think something I trying to learn is that actually these these things that I have being kind of more sensitive and and empathetic, and these things that are not necessarily seen as masculine traits or whatever. Okay, maybe they're not. But I mean, I think that's ridiculous. But also, they are part of who I am, and they make me who I am. And I, whether I necessarily believe it or not, there are these people who say that they they like me and <laughs> who are my friends and who care about me. Yeah, and, we're lying to you. All these things. I mean, it, there's always that thought in the You're back just of my mind. Entertainment. At it, that's point. very possible. But like these people, like. I don't know that these people would be in my life if I wasn't the person I am. So mm. if I lost, like, it, it would be weird to, to see it as some kind of massive issue because if if that was such a massive issue, why would all these people still be around, you know? And I think, Chris, these are things about yourself that you should love about yourself. As you say, they cause you problems, they do. But, you know, if it was, I said, no, I didn't say to Kat, I said to someone else, you know when you go and make a sin... And whenever I make a bleeding sim, I always inevitably... Sorry, I'm going somewhere with this. I inevitably make them similar to myself. Yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, if I thought about some of these things that give me a lot of problems, you know, like my thoughtfulness or thinking too deep, you know, when I would be overthinking, think too deep, that'd be kind of coming from my more thoughtful side. Caring too much about what everyone thought would just mean that I, I had a feeling towards them and was caring about other people around me. So I, I wouldn't want to let go of that whole emotion because those are parts of myself I really do love. And mm. I actually think are some of the nice parts of me. Um, and so, you know, if, if I was to say about someone else, oh, what, what characteristics would I like in a, a, a friend? I'd probably give them some of the characteristics I love about myself that have given me so many issues over the years, mm. not thinking about it. Mm. Um, but again, these are things that make you up that are, are really important. Are and it, As you say, they may have caused you problems in the past, but to everyone else, that's that's part of the loveliness of you. Um, so say, I think after a while, you've got you to think, actually, I'm fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> just there's parts of me that I do love, you know. The, and and with you, Chris, there sh- you you should have that. You should say, I do love that. Not I do love this. Well, yeah, I do love this about myself. You know that I am moral, and I do and not think about ass. everyone, and not more, just your yeah. ass. Think right. past that. Think um, past the ass. Think, think past this, and that you are ass. caring, and that the you know these these past the ass. things cause you problems, but at the same time, they're um, great attributes to have you know and you the man you you the man man. i i do think it's one of the big obstacles i have at the moment is um appreciate um having well having self-worth and and seeing that Mm. and and appreciating it in and in the sense of you know i'm paid to work 35 hours a week why am I going to work more than that? It doesn't do me any favors, actually, no. because that's not useful. So I need, and and you know these qualities I have, these things I have, um, being able to to see the positives in them rather than what I would tend to do, which is only see the negatives, um, and just I do genuinely need to be kinder to myself because mm. I I can be the most I you know when 
you think about horrible things that other people have said to you ever in the past, and yes. you, you think of how much that hurt you. And like, the people yeah. have said some really fucking horrible things and done some horrible things. But I think one of the most horrible people to myself is me. Because the stuff yeah, that I say, sure. the stuff that I don't say out loud, the stuff that stays very much in my head. Wow. You know, like, if you were to hear mm. me say it to someone, if I was to say it to someone else, mm. fuck me, that would not yeah. be. But I, but it's, it's how my brain has, has worked for such a long time. It, it yeah. is, it is, it is very difficult to, to break mm. that. And I, you know, it, it doesn't help me to go onto this thing and do a, a module on how I have these dark thoughts in my head. I was like, yeah, no, no. Horribly aware yeah. of that one. Um, yeah. I want to I stop the voice. I don't want to know more about the voice. I can... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that voice explains can it off. very well. That voice can yeah, very much fuck off. I want, I want sucks. help. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Chris. But, um, sure. but I, I don't think it's all... I mean, I'm I'm lucky that I have people around who care, like you guys and 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 some of the people listening and 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 friends and family and and all these things, which does help. Um, I genuinely keep saying it's people. I'm like, I it's difficult to find the words because it you worry that it sounds like it doesn't mean as much, but yeah, to actually have people around who care and and want to know how you and genuinely want you to be better. For no other reason mm. than because it, it mm. they want the best for you. It makes it's just like um, you know, you know how I love that metaphor, like the the black dog or like black clouds, all that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like it is like <laughs> like it is like having like those like candles, like tiny like tea light candle things that someone's lit, and you're like, oh look, there's a little bit of there's a light over there, like these, or like looking up at the sky, and you just see like the. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's all black. Oh, look, there's a star. That's that's cute. It's like, oh, and 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 you see these things, and it just gets that little bit of light that breaks through. Actually, it makes you think. Yeah. All right, I'll I'll keep trying because there mm. are these things here that are worth trying for. Yeah, that just really reminded me of the film Soul, the Pixar. Oh was yeah, it Disney Soul. Or was it Pixar? Yeah. The- yeah, Pixar. Uh, um, I don't think it's I didn't know which one. It, it's oh, really it's, good. It's actually. heavy. Very it's heavy. heavy. Fucking so heavy. You film. gotta be like. But it. it the ending was quite. Uh, yeah. I think I can't remember exactly. E, e, no, mm. About ten minutes, yeah, but, but twenty minutes in, you think, way, "Oh, this is the kind of film we're about to watch now." Yeah, it, it's it's heavy, but it's like sweet, I guess. But like. It's a very good film. Just it's like Inside Out. Inside Out was one that really oh. got me. Because oh, that's the same. God, that starts actually... off and you're like, oh, no. and then you're like, oh, oh, this got real, and now I'm in too deep, mm. and I've got to like see it through. But that was a really good. Saw one. that film in the cinema. Oh no! Why would you say this? When he broke. Why would you say this? Can you explain it? Because I wasn't there, was I? So I broke up with my ex of five years and we were sat in the cinema <laughs> and we said, oh, we're going to just be friends. So we went along. And what film did we say we were going to go see Inside Out? Oh, yes. Oh, A film no. about how to deal with your feelings. And even though things have happened in your life that are sad, like losing friends and moving places, eventually there will be a sad, happy memory. Oh. And it was like, oh, my God. I sat down. And the very first thing that they put on was this little short film before the main movie mm. called, I think it was I Lava You, or the, about two volcanoes. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. One goes up and one goes down, so they never actually get to see each other, <laughs> but they always will love one another as they go. And you know when you're just like, she she burst into tears. <laughs> In the first five minutes, I thought, oh, my God, we're going to be on the, the ride of a lifetime. Oh, my God. And little did I know, the next hour and a half, I'm not going to do an impression because it is it was pretty awful. But she was crying her eyes out, oh, and the guy no. it was it was just me and her in the cinema as well. So oh. the guy who was so the guy who was um, in the room with us, you know, they usually have a, a like steward, an or, yeah, and Usher stood there just at the bottom, was just staring at me oh. the whole time, <laughs> like looking right at me, like you piece of shit. <laughs> and at that point, I wanted to die. I didn't want to be there no more. 
Um, I was thinking, how, how do I say, let's just, just walk away from this. Um, but it was awful. That, that, that actually goes down as one of the worst hour and a half, two hours of my life. Oh, my <laughs> God. Does. What a disaster. Yeah, yeah, so that. But, um, but Soul is something as, as kind of similar to that, where for me, when I saw Inside Out, not maybe that time, the second time, <laughs> there was a lot of emotions. I can't believe you chose to watch it again after that. <laughs> you had to change it. Was it. You a had great to get film. a happy memory the second time. Yeah, I had to get a But the thing was memory. that it... <laughs> I'm not, as you say, Chris, sometimes I'm not able to say what I exactly mean, usually mm. because I can't quite articulate it in the way that I want it to come yeah. across. Um, so I end up tripping over my words and whatever. That film said a lot about that and said said about processing your feelings the way I felt before. It said it in a much more simplistic way that I could understand. Mm. Um, and Soul does a very similar thing. It, 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 it kind of helps you process, actually. I will say about Pixar, they are so clever with putting things in a way where kids can try and deal with grief for yeah. that film. It's like it, it teaches yeah. you a lot of lessons. It teaches me yeah. a lot of lessons, even being and we twenty-eight. Watched it as you know, adults, yeah, like yeah. it's great. Yeah. It was. It's, I think it's, it's one of the crazy amazing. things, really, is that we um, overcomplicate a lot of things mm. as adults and make it into this this thing. And actually, like sometimes that you like saying. I'm sad. Is is the words it, that is that is what I'm trying to say, and I I try and find this way. Of, well, you know, like uh, sometimes this thing happens, and and then this and this, is that. No, I I'm actually just very very sad, and that's that basically sums it up very well. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't need to be. And you know, even if you don't have the words, it's okay to be like, just not okay. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Like that. we we know what that means. So you don't you don't need to say. And I think that's a really good thing. Really, is that if someone asks you how you're doing and you're not okay, you know, so you can just say, "I'm not okay." I don't really yeah. have the words right now, but I'm not okay. Yeah. No. Absolutely. One hundred percent. And and not being too worried about what that other person thinks. You yeah. know. I mean, for me. The, the most empowering part of coming coming through all of this and going through crisis teams and stuff is now to find friends and you know and I, I can name like you know a good 10 off my list where I can say well I'll, I'll sit down and, and talk to them about everything on a mental health level that I, I would never talk about before and I do it for two reasons I do it because I want people who also feel that kind of mental pressure and that to mental anxiety alone. to not feel alone and feel that they can talk about yeah. it, but I also do it for me so that I can think to myself, well, fuck this. I've let that run me down and kept that in the closet for so long. Um, yeah, you laugh because I said that. Sorry. Grow up, cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, up, cat. I'm going to make this work for me. I'm going to make this a weapon as opposed to, just you know letting it bear so heavily on me so when i talk to people about it it's 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 you know it's it actually helped me yeah i hate you so much that's, sometimes that's karma for doing it to me earlier that's okay then so. but i do get that but like, you know that thing yeah. why i sent you that message that long, like angry and i was like i don't really know what i'm trying to say i just need to say it i just need to get it out of my head and like yeah it was such a cathartic thing afterwards because so other people mm. were listening and they were like, oh, you know, that, that, that's really sad. I was like, yeah, but, you I know, I needed to say, and I, I, I think I said, I was yeah. like, you don't have to listen to this. If you don't, like, I don't really mind if you listen to it or not. But right now mm. I just need to say it, and get, get it out of my head. Because well, I, didn't I really can't give carry you it around. Response. No, you didn't, but you didn't need to. Because... But that was the thing. I didn't. I thought you, you know, you wanted to just get it off your chest type thing. I would have been happy to um, have a conversation if you wanted to have one, but I wasn't gonna like. Yeah. I was like, if you. I, yeah. I was gonna say since our last like uh, mental health podcast episode, you know, it's been a long time since that. I think we've both been a lot better in being open with each other about our like mental 100%. health status and like I think. Yeah, just being a lot more honest personally mm. as well. Like, it's definitely. I feel. When I feel like crap, 
I, you know, sometimes you can't shake the feeling, but I don't, it doesn't get to the extreme level it did before because I, it's taken away that loneliness. I'm the only person who's ever felt this way. Yeah. And that's the best you can do, really, you know, and not picking yourself apart at every point or letting others' words pick you apart. I know that's a very simple kind of thing again, but still it's it's, it's true, being kind to yourself and not thinking too heavily. Mm-hmm. I get this. Someone saying to me, oh, you, you do talk a lot, don't you, Piers? Yeah. No, but I find no, I just... it very... Um... I, 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 when I listen to you talk, there's always a lot in there that I, I'm just sat there like nodding. Cause I'm like, yeah, no, I, yes, yeah, that's, 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 I, I relate to that very, and I was just looking back at this when I sent Kat this, this voice message. Um, she, like, the first few messages were, I feel you, we're in this together. Mm. And actually, Aww. that's all I needed. I didn't need mm, anything more. Nice I didn't need someone to give me a play by play, second by second response of everything no. I said, because it was enough actually for someone to say, "Yeah, I get it. I understand." I yeah yeah I, I, I that just it it felt kind of like I recognize it. You know, I'm not invalidating mm. it. I'm not taking away from it. I'm just saying yes. It yeah. Like, and and actually, it, that meant uh, so much to me. Really, actually, um, it meant yeah. as much as like a long response would have done because I think I knew what was I I knew what was behind it. Yeah. And actually, yeah. that yeah, that said it. That said everything I I I I, I needed. I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Chrissy, and and to not feel alone in that moment. Exactly, you know? exactly. It was yeah. that thing of like, I become so convinced very often that I've I've completely cracked. You know that like, I'm 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 clearly broken because some of the thoughts that I'm having are just so wow. out there that they must only happen inside my head. And actually, when yeah. someone else goes, no, I get that. Or I'm listening to you talking and you say something and I'm like, I've had that thought. I've had that thought. Like, it just makes you feel suddenly more like, yeah, (laughs) it's like, I, whether or not it's necessarily a healthy thing to be thinking or, you know, what the, Mm. the fact that that thought has crossed someone else's mind makes you think, okay. This is not just a me problem. No. Yeah, no. This is not like a I am fundamentally broken in some way. This is a someone else has had this thought, and actually that means that there's probably some kind of way through. Because if we're if we're both having this thought, maybe there's a way that, that you know there's something that can come of it, and something that can come from sharing experiences, whatever. I do, I've completely lost where I'm trying to go with it. No, I don't know. I remember hearing a, a comedian, um, you remember the in-between is the headmaster, who's yeah. now gone off to do his own. Yeah. And he said that if my wife could hear one thought from my head throughout the entire day, she would have me committed. And that's a straight up thing. You know, that's that's not me just, you know, making it over, overly simplified. If she could hear one thought, committed. One will go anywhere near me, ever again. <laughs> just, just one, one thought, and I thought, yeah, actually, that that's that that sounds about right. Actually, I can't keep any of my thoughts in. Everything comes out of me. Yeah, it does. All my crazy just out on the table. No, but I like. Yeah, it, it makes it easy yeah. to. You're very Stop. honest and open about these things, which makes it very easy to to relate to a lot of what you're saying and, and, and be clear about I think I'm in 99% of cases pretty clear where I stand with you and the 1% is usually when we're messaging and there's a full stop in there and because I'm a Gen Z millennial or whatever I can't react well with full stops and it sends me into a, a thing because that's just how our brains are wired for some dumb reason but actually I always feel fair, and it's something I find refreshing because lots of people, I spend time thinking, oh, it, mm. most of the time I, I have to have you. different. I'm good. 
I have to have different like variations of like bluntness. So like um, with Pierce, he gets he gets it wrong. You have to ease it down a bit. Well, you, sometimes. Well, I sometimes. Yes, I have. She's pretty good, usually. Yeah. Ninety percent. There's nothing wrong. And, and there's a little ten percent. You think, fuck, what did she and say? And then it's like with family, I always have to put like kisses mm. at the end so that. If I have said something blunt, then at least they're like distracted by taste the edge off. <laughs> um, I don't like. I just it's difficult. I have to rewrite messages so many times mm. because it will come out as my train of thought, and then I'll be like, "Oh, if I say that in person, they're going to see that I'm not wanting to cut them open." Um, but over message, they might think that because they're not seeing me laughing. It's one of the know. things I think you learn, though, like, the more you read someone's, it's, the more you talk to someone, so you, like, you can sometimes, like, hear how they would say it, and you just know. So, actually, yeah. sometimes I can just, I just, like, I just read your messages, and I'm like, okay, I know, I know what you're, what you're saying, you don't have to I've... yeet kisses in there, I was like, I, I got it, don't you worry. I think from us doing the podcast without video calling has probably helped as well. Yes. Um, because you're not relying on, like, for me, I was I kept yawning earlier. Like, I don't know why. I just got into a cycle of yawning. I've done it before in the podcast. Um, and it's not like some people would take that as he's now yawning. That's so funny. Um, mm. some people take that as Sorry. boredom, mm. or we've yeah, like we've spoken about that before, but, um. I can't remember what I was saying now. The yawn distracted me. Ah, it's that, that point. While editing, I've hit where, my um, You would yawn, or I would yawn, or something. I'd be like, "That doesn't look good. That looks like they're really, I'm really bored by what they're saying." And actually, it was like, <laughs> "No, no, no. It's just because both of us, when we're listening, our faces kind of just go very blank, and say so to everyone yeah. else looking, they're like, "Oh my god, they're so bored of each other." And it's like well, that's what... you watch and you watch and you watch and it's like just like same face, same face. And suddenly, like one of us will say something, the other one will just laugh. And it's like someone's just yeah. gone, wait, turn the emotion back on quick, quick, quick. <laughs> and like, like it just it cuts said, through. To me earlier, he was like, You're right. Like, but in a very like Yes, I remember he said it. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's just because you, you were looked really upset looking out the window. I was like, I Are you okay? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to What? Oh god, what is it? Uh, let's not get distracted. Yeah, let's not get distracted. Um, yeah, I oh, know. I was just looking out the window like I normally do on the podcast. She like does. I just, just blanked out, and Pierce just kept looking at me. I was like, oh, I do not have the energy to show like facial expressions for the next two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a conscious thought sometimes, and I do. Like, with these, you know, I have to sometimes change my expressions and there's, we do have miscommunications and Yeah, stuff I think because, because I'm such a people pleaser, I always have been, I was But you, you'll that find me, like, you'll think I'm being shitty with you when I don't think I am um, a lot of the time. But it that's comes the thing, out of blood. facial cues to me and I are the most that. important part. I know it sounds funny. If someone doesn't smile or doesn't, it doesn't look that happy to see me, I honestly oh, take it me. so badly. That gives oh. you anxiety. Though. It gives that me terrible me. anxiety. Forever. But then and like, any time I'm thinking about that person, if someone's got just kind of a dead face but I d- all like, the I time, help I'm like, oh, shit. It does it I, happens I, I, to me online. I was in a, someone's stream and someone else joined, one of our friends joined, and to everyone else, they were like, oh, hey, 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 and kept putting in love heart at the end. And I was like, oh, hey. And they said, hey, no love heart at the end. And I was like, well, that's it then. It's like, I'm a piece of garbage, I'm a trash, I'm going to get thrown out. I, the absolute God. waste of space. Like, and then I, I think I ended up, I was like, do I get a love heart? And then they were, I was like, oh, well, now I look like a needy shit as well, so that's good. Um, <laughs> I love how you've got the same monologue as me. But it's so stupid, it, so I 100% get what, yeah, I, I know what Piers is going from. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, it's awful. It sucks so bad. At a party, I'm awful. I was like, oh, well, Sonso didn't seem on that yeah, great Yeah, you'll be like, oh, she I okay? don't, oh, think, I don't think she likes me. Oh, I'm not, I don't yeah. think she's a fan of me. Just because 
she didn't smile at me all that great. And then the problem with having someone who's blunt in your life <laughs> is that they will end up going and telling that person when you're yes. stood there and you feel... Oh, no, I'd just be like, oh, do you like his? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause then he the didn't think is, you liked him. Yeah, because most of the time they do like someone I don't you. know that well. And right. I'm sure they're like, oh, uh, no, 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 I didn't really think that. I just said One you know, of my you relatives. To... Fucking don't hell, name that was names. embarrassing. One of my relatives. To a whole party. Pierce, can you just listen? <laughs> One of my relatives. Huh? Oh, wait, we should probably end the podcast, actually. I've just realised this is... It's, it's we got a bit carried away, didn't we? No, I was. Yeah. So I can. I think one thing I would say before. Yeah, well, exactly. I think definitely, and it's not even. Really, this is just where we've ended up in this conversation. But like, I think you and I definitely have become better at communicating with each other. Mm. Genuinely, yeah. not genuine, but like, I think when we were younger, we both kind of were quite um, awkward. Awkward, but also for one reason or another, kind of incapable of really being emotional or being fully open and vulnerable. You know, like, I feel like we both go for, like, the, ha, yeah, I want to kill myself, <laughs> kind of thing. But, like, yeah. to actually confront those things, because I know that from my side, I was like, oh, if I admit some of these things that are in my head, she's just going to be, like, done, like, She's not going to care anymore. I think we were in very similar places, but we yeah. were joking about it instead of talking about it. I think that's it. the thing, we, because neither of us really, I don't know, for whether something to do with maybe what we were going through in life and various things, we weren't. And yeah. I think, actually, as we've both grown up, we're better at being able to say, actually, I feel like shit. And, and like, we can make a joke about it, but like we can also be honest about it. I think we've we can have got the flip that. side. Yeah, we can we can talk about. We know the time and place for like yeah. laughing. And there's still I think the podcast... times where it goes wrong. I think there's still times when, yeah, especially the podcast where I get in my own head when I'm talking, and if you mm. if I haven't heard you say anything for a while or I haven't seen the like meter flick up, I'm like, oh, she's yeah, she hates it. She hates it. Stop talking. And then you're like. Oh no, Pippin was doing something. Pippin was, was doing. Bit. I knew you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, right. Or like, so, yeah, something's happened, and I've like, I'm trying to deal with it quietly yeah. while listening to you. It, yeah. And, and my brain only... just immediately goes to the worst case scenario. I'm like, oh, she hates mm. me. That's the end of it. Friendship <laughs> over. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, Chris, I have exactly that same thing on a, a bi-weekly basis. <laughs> um, because what happens is that I'll write a song. Mm. two songs sorry very quickly and i'll, I'll do no, these two songs gonna... i'll put a lot into it and then i'll send them over to or or someone i'm working with or whatever and you know these guys are working all the time and then i'll sit there and i wait four days and i wait five days and usually you can trace it on the first day i'm like optimistic i really like this <laughs> song second day well you know it's, it's still good yeah. yeah third day you know, I'm just not sure on it anymore. Fourth, I, I just think it's one of the worst things I've ever written. Um, and then by the fifth day, you're like, he hates me, he's heard this song, mm -hmm. and he's thought to himself, what a talentless hack. On the fifth day, and I'd be messaging up, like, actually, don't worry about <laughs> listening to that. It wasn't very good. Don't just delete it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's what I do. <laughs> no, that sixth day. That sixth day after a week, I go, don't worry about that. Here's something else. Um, <laughs> but I did that this week. So that gives you, and I have that every fucking week. I have this, this de degradation. And by the fifth day, I'm pissed off at everything. Every week. Every week. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Oh, and that's God. my life. In and out. Um, the oh, thing is, God. though, it's kind of hard though because people will be like, "Oh, I really like this song that I've just written." You tell me that, and then a few days later, I'll be like, "It's terrible! It's terrible!" I'm like, Are you just looking for compliments here? Like, is that what we're getting? So then you get the like, I was like, "Pierce, you know it's good. Stop being stupid!" Like, and, that's, There's the and then blunder. he's like, ah! "There it is." Ah! Ah! But the thing is, from my side of things, I've not seen the like build up behind closed. I've like like not heard your internal thoughts of you gradually descending. You've gone mm. from like, "Oh yeah, this this is like the best thing I've ever written." To this is the worst thing I've ever. Written. I'm like, for fuck's sake! <laughs> what, the, the worst thing that they can ever say to me, one of these guys, is, "Oh, Piers, I'm gonna listen right now," and they're not message me for four days. Mm. <gasps> oh, even if they don't message I me do for an hour. <laughs> 
<laughs> if they don't message me for an hour, I go, oh my god, they're really thinking to themselves how much they hate this. Oi, oi. Two oh, pictures yeah, actually didn't fit on one. Sorry. Can you stop leaning? Like you keep getting further and further across the room, and I'm having to like lean. At one point, I was lying on Pierce because I kept he kept pulling the ear. Here's my question: piece. What are you going to use to replace Oi Oi? I don't know. What are you going to replace it with? What would you go? It, for? it has to come naturally. Hola. Have I said it today? Yes, about ten seconds ago. Oh, other than that. Um, not that I'm aware of, but I tell you what, maybe I'll do a thing where I'll do a oi oi counter. An oi oi count, love it. And then we can assess at the end of it how it's I need to stop saying love it as well, because I say that and it sounds so sarcastic when I say it. There is, you say this with every single, like, phrase you go for. You'll just replace it with something else and then we'll have the same conversation. I know! And And it's definitely on me for pointing it out. It, when I when I say love it, I think oh okay, well, like at least people are gonna know no matter what tone that like I appreciate it. But then some people think I'm some like like mean girl who <laughs> is just sarcastic with everything and just like no, just she's I actually a really nice saying, person. I'm okay. Oh, yeah, she. Yeah. Sorry, I look really surprised when you said that on the camera. <laughs> so you're gonna see me in my eyes. Honestly, Ooh. your spanking session later is. It's gonna, gonna be, be a wild. <laughs> one. I might come around and join in. To be honest. <laughs> Oh or at God. least watch in the bushes. Yeah, at least yeah watch, you can yeah. you can have him. You can spank yeah. him. I'll just have a cup of tea in the next room. Yeah, yeah. and listen to his screams. That's fair. I respect. That. She's into that. She's she's a. That's well, why there she, we go. That's why she listens to my music. To listen to me just <laughs> whining away for hours, and then like I'll oh, listen to him. He sounds like a cat. Oh. Oh my God! Right. Hi. Thanks for listening to this. Um, it has been a long. Episode of <laughs> what well, I don't editing. really know. Oh, it was God. in theory about mental health, and we touched on it. We touched on it, but we also discussed supermarkets, spanking, yeah, Pippin, um, peg, um, spanking again, Egg gagging, uh, peers naming names, A bit of politics. Um, here, do you want to name anyone else's name? Boring. Yeah, I know, you literally, like, you, uh, I'm Cats not even panic saying. every time you mention a name and me writing down the yeah. stamp so I can remove the name. <laughs> even can you just put in a beep? Even when you're saying about... <laughs> Please, that's so much more fun. <laughs> beep! Oh, I don't know why I can't mention beep! <laughs> Surely if I just say beep, it's all right. Beep! I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to do that. <laughs> You have like a little black bar that appears across your mouth that just says censored. That's no, so you should say better. Muppet. Muppet. Muppet, just, you, you know. Or oh, like time. gagged. 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 <laughs> okay, well, thanks for being here. Kiz, thanks for, um, <laughs> thanks for popping in. Being our... Um, no, it's all right. I'll, I'll, I think Piers should come glad. back more regularly. I think every few episodes Piers should come back in Um. For no other reason. How long do you want our relationship to last? Well, I think it'll be a good <laughs> test of, you know, like, you can bring your marriage problems on. The, that's it. After you've got married, oh, yeah. we'll have, oh like, a little God. marriage counselling session every few weeks where you come in and I sit here as the, like, independent <laughs> observer and I'm like, to be honest, kind of does feel like you should probably up to a metal bat now <laughs> instead of the wooden one. We should do we should do an episode like just before we get married and then just like and then gradually we'll after do, as we'll well. We'll do pre marriage <laughs> honeymoon period. Yeah. End of the honeymoon period. <laughs> yeah. Who was it who said to us? Oh, that when the honeymoon period ended and both of us were set like we didn't really have a honeymoon period. <laughs> <laughs> be honest with you there was or really maybe it's one period. big long honeymoon period I think it just got better <laughs> yeah I know that sounds really silly but initially it was actually very difficult yeah yeah I mean like we were both very difficult to one another We. I, I can't we possibly argue. imagine that for a second <laughs> we definitely argue I know we've had a couple of arguments recently but we definitely argue less than we used to oh, quite yeah. a lot yeah, we're not afraid of arguing. If we go to do and it, we we'll know, do it. I think when we argue as well, most of the time we know, like, you know, that it, we're going to have a positive. Uh, yeah. Okay, everyone's going to argue we, we know, sometimes, but like, yeah. 
it's, we know it's, it's not like the end of our relationship type thing. No. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not like, here's you've got a tiny dick and here's isn't like, <laughs> well, you're... No, we've established that already, Chris. It's all right. I don't know where Wait, I was going to go what? with that one. <laughs> No, no, we, we got that one out of the... That was pretty uh, above early board game, from the get-go. Early doors. <laughs> early doors. Early early doors. Early I don't get this. You have this thing about saying you've got a small willy, and I don't... Shh, don't tell people otherwise. But, like, My God, you... what are you no, doing? but why do you, like, you tell, say this to people at parties? You, like, pull your pinky out. No, it's because like... when men come along and, like, whoa, oh, I've got, got a massive bit old penis. Like it. it's it's like and I'm just like, I have a tiny penis. Exactly. I just like I prefer to go into people tiny. I know, I just don't it's get where it's come from. It just makes me laugh. You know, it's it's quite cute in its little. Wait, right. you know, I just honestly, I prefer saying that than big penis. <laughs> I can't imagine anything worse. <laughs> oh god, this is cringe me out. If my dad hears this, I'm sorry. I oh, don't god. think your dad should. If your dad is listening to this, then well. Rest assured, I won't be. Um, he won't be talking to me anymore. <laughs> give us a, a happy thought to end on. Here you go, free ring. Give, give us happy thought. Just like ha- thank you all for joining us. Yeah, but do, go on. Well, you can say anything you, you want. This is your moment. You can say whatever you this, like. This is my moment. Thank you guys so much for having me. Not cat. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be back at some point again. Thank you. He will be back. <laughs> He will. Ah! Cat will be back, see. I guess I'll be back. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't know what I was waiting for but... there. I was hoping something would happen. <laughs> no, it's yeah. fine. For the, that's a little treat for the video. Have you done uh, it? You've you done a little. All right. I'm going to look forward to that. Edison going <laughs> to. Anyway, I do love you guys. Thanks for sticking with us for like oh. two two years, something like that. It's been a long time. It's long been a time. while. It's been a while. If you've listened since the first one, um, you're crazy. Give us a little love heart. Oh, yeah. I'm what colour? An or- orange love heart. Oh, maybe it should be yellow. It I'll should be yellow. Yellow. Should, should yellow. Be yellow. Love heart. Oh, please. Can, and you'll send them a piece of merch. We don't, don't have, have any merch. merch. You'll make some much with your two faces on it. Oh my Smiling. god! Can you imagine? That something? sounds amazing. Right? Yeah, we'll do it. Oh. We'll make some much. Sure. It's not. I do want to make t-shirts yeah. at some point, but I feel like we need to have, like, a bit. You got to more... do it well. Yeah. It's got to be good, to... and also I don't want to tell someone, "Hey, buy my forty-pound world to rights podcast t-shirt." Yeah. Because I wouldn't I buy it. You... I think what you need is you need, literally, just like. Cat's face and one of the funniest moments on World's Right podcast, and I think you need Chris's face completely laughing your asses off. Mm-hmm. Just take your heads off. World's Right podcast, yellow background, and mm-hmm. then either side of the sign. Nailed there it. There you go. Nailed it. Nailed Does that it. mean I have to cut you in now because you can't have a good idea there? Because well, I'll do it. I, I, I'm fine have, I, I mean, I may have recommended the name to you, you know, just, yeah, yeah. just uh, putting that one out there. <laughs> I've done that. Right. Pat looks like she's done. I'm done. Okay, my lead brain the is... Lead the goodbye. Okay. Lead the goodbye. We love you. Thank you for listening to our bullshit as always. And we will hopefully speak to you soon. You just burped. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Chris, say goodbye before Bye. I end it all. Bye. Bye. Bye.